right, what's going on, everyone? Uh, woo. Sorry, it took me a little bit to get ready. I, you know, cooling off of this pretty hot and spicy and, and crazy and wild and Jerry Springer and Maury. I mean, it was all that and much more in tonight's crazy episode. What's going on, everyone? What's going on, everyone? And welcome back to our weekly live after show for House of the Dragon. If you all are tuning in for the first time, we do this every single week. Um, first, we do our watch along. So if you guys, uh, you know, want to watch the episode with us live, we do it every single Sunday. We had a great watch along, some great tea, some great conversations, some great jaw dropping moments. Uh, so definitely join the watch along if you weren't able to join in today. But listen, we are here to talk about this. <laughs> So, listen, I'm calling them right now. This is my favorite episode of the season. The performances, the direction, the the, the tea, y'all, literally, metaphorically, the, 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 literally the tea in this episode <laughs> was insane. Um, so much to discuss. Did Damon really think that was a good idea? Will Renera drink the tea? How will her image be after this episode? Who's going to be the next hand of the king? You know, um, the spies that Masera, who she has out there, what is she doing? Who is she working for? Um, oh my goodness, y'all. Oh my goodness. And Renera, my, 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 my Renera. I don't like lying. Lying does not look good on Renera. She lied a lot tonight, but oh my goodness, we got so much to discuss. So, hey, before we get into today's festivities, uh, shout out to everyone joining me again. I can't thank you all enough for the team support. I love talking about the show. I'm loving this show, number one. It just feels so good in my bones to be able to talk about the House of the Dragon and know that Game of Thrones is on the top of his game again, and it is just the best TV show on TV right now. I'm sorry. I haven't I haven't caught up with House of the or House of the House of the Rings. <laughs> haven't really watched or dove deep into Lord of the Rings right now. Atlanta's starting this week. I mean, some great TV out there, but I don't think anything's better than this show right now. I'm just putting it out there. But <sighs> I digress. Man, that was a fantastic episode. But let me say what's up to everyone in the chat. What's going on? What's going on? L. Uh, oh, L. By the way, let me know if you uh, again as we've been doing these last few weeks. I open up the the stream yard to anyone that wants to join in. So let me know. Um, you know who wants to join. Put a one in the chat if you want to join tonight's discussion. Share your thoughts. How you felt about the episode. Um, what was Damon thinking? What is Renera's image going to be like? Let me know. Like I said, put a one in the chat if you all want to join the discussion. I'll share that link <clears throat> in just a little bit. Um, but man, what a fantastic show. What a fantastic setup. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like for the first time in a very long time, we didn't skip ahead two, three years. It seemed to only be a year that we jumped ahead in this episode because episode three, we know there was the, the birthday of um, Aegon. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was celebrating his second birthday in, in last week, and then in today's episode, they said that he was three when the uh, the street show. He said that the youngin or the princeling that's three. So it's only been a year ahead of time. So I'm glad that we didn't jump. You know, as we've been jumping loops these last few weeks, so I like that we didn't get that much time jump. Um, but. Again, guys, I am, uh, and part of me, I'm just kind of sharing the links and making sure we can get as many Game of Thrones, House of Dragon fans in here so we can have a good live stream. And again, if anyone wants to join, just put a one in the chat and I will share that link. What's going on, G? What's going on, Zia? Jay Manley, it's been a minute, Jay. How you been doing, man? Very interesting episode. <laughs> Interesting is a word I would use, Jay. Uh, but no doubt what's going on to you, man. Um... So how, yeah, we'll talk about that tonight. There definitely is going to have to be a new uh, hand to the king because there's, um, someone got fired. Finally, Otto took, uh, then take, took the king, what, 14, 15 years to know what's going on. All right, Eric wants to join. G wants to join. All right, let me go ahead and uh, get the link situated here. All right, let me copy this. Again, guys, if, you, uh, if you're here tonight supporting the channel, supporting the stream, do me a favor. Make sure you're giving the video a thumbs up. Leaving your thoughts in the live chat, and um, man, we got a lot to discuss. So uh, let me share this link right quick. Join the stream by clicking this link. All right, guys. So whoever wants to join, uh, I like to keep the panels like no more than four. So uh, I think G, Eric, and Meg, and Justin. Okay, yeah, just let me know. Uh, we'll keep it to a panel with four, and it will kind of rotate uh, as we go along. So I am going to put that stream link in the um, chat right about during the stream by clicking this link. All right. So everyone, the, the link to tonight's stream is in the, the live chat. So go ahead and click that. 
again, um, let's just, let's discuss. Let's talk about it. We got a lot to discuss. Let me get this episode situated too. Let me get the episode where we can get some photos going and have some discussions, y'all. Whew, what an episode. What an absolute episode. Before we get into it too, by the way, again, shout out to everyone who's joined us. How's everyone's weekend? Did anyone um, check out D23? We got any Marvel fans in the chat? Got some DC fans in the chat with the Black Adam trailer that dropped a few days ago. You all see uh, Barbarian um, that came out this weekend, a really interesting horror film. Let me know. Let me know while we get everyone uh, situated. I'm trying to pull up this uh, my HBO Max where we can uh, – here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies, man. Who, who got allergies out there, man? My allergies are kicking my ass today. Um, as did this episode. Whew, this episode, man, I, I need some tea after this episode. I need all the tea in the world after tonight's episode, y'all. Oh, my goodness. All right, we got the episode situated here. All right, so like I said, if anyone wants to join tonight's stream, just go ahead and click that link, and uh, we get this party started, man. Um, in the meantime, let me just give my little two cents. Again, just looking at this as, as a whole... What was Damon thinking, man? What was the thought process behind? Let me go ahead and sleep with my niece, and then I'm not going to lie about it. I'm just going to, you know, I, I guess I, I respect that. He was the only one that was kind of truthful in tonight's episode, uh, letting the king know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I slept with her, man. We used to do this a lot when we were kids, man, and um, I should have known. I should have known. I should have known from this opening shot that this was going to be some uh, – some craziness tonight from the opening shot when Renair is holding that necklace that her uncle gave her back in episode one, y'all. Great call back to that. Uh, oh, oh, we got our first guest in the back room. Uh, let me bring him in a bit. And again, guys, we are here to discuss all spoilers uh, for tonight's episode and get into the discussion. We got my other guests popping in. They're coming in. They're coming in. All right. So let me bring in my man, Eric, uh, who I know is a big Game of Thrones fan. What's going on, Eric? Hey, man. How's it going? Uh, man, that, yeah, that was a pretty killer episode yet again, but... They all, they all have been. Yeah, man. It is, it's great to see you, Eric. I'm excited to have you on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eric. He has his own uh, YouTube channel that I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, tell the people about here soon. I know you're big into the books. You're big into this lore, so I'm excited to pick your brain tonight, man. But why don't you let the people at home know uh, who you are and uh, a little bit about your channel, my friend. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Eric, and uh, I, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, just, uh, just a couple – for movie and TV reviews so far, and uh, I don't know, haven't haven't done put out a video really since since the Batman. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I might I might do something at the end of House of the Dragon though. So uh, yeah, if you want to check me out, you can find me there on YouTube and Instagram. Yes, yes, and y'all see the 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 Funko pops in the back. This yeah. man's a Game of Thrones fan, ladies and gentlemen. So we are going to have some great discussions tonight. And uh, and again, shout out to you, Eric. And and by the time this video is finally uploaded by the end of the stream, I'll go ahead and put your link and all that stuff for so people can find you and subscribe to your content. Um, bringing back on one of our guests that we had, I feel like it was like two weeks ago that episode three was, but it was literally a week ago. But he joined us briefly, and I'm excited to have him back on and share his two cents and uh, sip some of this tea with us tonight, Eric, because there's a lot of tea that we're going to dive into tonight i'm talking about my man g g yep. what's going on man what's good y'all hey welcome back man uh yes, this sir. is an episode to talk about man this is this is this is one of those episodes too it don't it don't got mixy that don't got super mixy <laughs> super man. mixy i'm super excited for it though yeah man Let's well again talk. i appreciate you joining us again and again for those that didn't see the stream last week why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and let, let the people know where they can find you man What's good, y'all? My name is G. Um, I review uh, movies, anime, TV shows, and react and do a whole bunch of recaps and stuff like that on YouTube. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, hey, again, once this video is finally uploaded, I'll go ahead and put Eric and G's link in the description so you all can give them a follow and check out their awesome content. So toss it into you first, Eric, since this is your first time joining one of our after shows, man. Again, I appreciate you coming on. Let me know before we get into episode four, how have you been enjoying or maybe not enjoying the first three episodes and then kind of transition to your thoughts on tonight's episode? Oh, yeah, I've, I've been loving it, like right from the start. Um, I, I, It's really, I couldn't even like rank them. I mean, the, they've all been fantastic. Um, yeah. This one, yeah, might have been my favorite, but I, I tend to say <laughs> that like every week. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, th I think the premiere, though, especially was a really great, like, just kind of introduction, reintroduction into the world. Um, yeah, no, I've actually I had like friends over the first couple weeks and last week I was just tired. So that's why I haven't actually joined before now. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm just 
I'm just so happy, like you were saying, that the Game of Thrones is back in full force and people yeah. are like loving it again. And, yep. and I can actually like feel connected with the world because uh, I never stopped loving Game of Thrones, but a lot of people did. So I felt yeah, really man, like, a lot of people left. Yeah, I felt pretty <laughs> alienated for a while. So this is like <laughs> kind of like, OK, I feel OK again. <laughs> yeah no i hear you eric it's uh i know we talked i think we talked about it when we were uh one of the she hulk uh, streams you had mentioned that you've you know you, you didn't hate the eighth season you know that it has some of the shortcomings but i know you're a big fan of the series and uh yeah man like you like i said earlier it's, it just feels so good to be back in this world the writing the performances the deception the, the politics this is what game of thrones this has made it one of the best shows of all time in my opinion this show is just really clicking for me eric um but tossing to you, G. Uh, you know, we had you on last week, man, and, and we're here talking about episode four. Uh, yeah. For me, uh, I'll say it right now, Eric, this is my favorite episode uh, for me. I, I, and I don't know if you saw the stream last week. I wasn't the biggest fan of the second half of episode three, but this one from top to bottom was fantastic. But, G, man, what did you think about this fourth episode? And what the hell was Damon thinking, man, in this episode? <laughs> My man was running wild. He was he was plotting. I want to say that. Mm -hmm. he. I feel, I felt like this was a, a, a play, but at the same time, it was like... I feel like it was still true because he'd be looking at her real strange a lot, like mm -hmm. in, in throughout the first few episodes and, you know, like, like on the picture right there, she still got the necklace he gave her. Mm -hmm. And it was just like one of those things I was just like, bro, I was like, oh, please don't do it. Please don't, please don't do it. But Game of Thrones go Game of Thrones, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. So um, as far as like the rankings, y'all to talk about y'all rankings for this episode, I this is this is this is up there. This is up there for me. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's like I finally feel like we're in the game now, you mm -hmm. know. And now I feel like that's that's the biggest thing for me. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, you know what that last uh uh first off everything you said was fantastic but that last point you made as far as feeling like we're now in the game right we're four episodes in and it seems like it's only been like otto's been kind of playing a game uh right. and, and damon's been scheming every now and then but he seems to be more kind of a loose cannon more than being like having a decisiveness to him like otto but now as you just mentioned g renera is kind of playing the game you know right. allison in a sense is is kind of you know kind of working her maneuvers uh, otto's gonna definitely have to get into a new game because he's uh he's lost his main game as the uh, head of the king but i definitely agree with you man four episodes in it sounds like everyone now the pieces to the puzzles are starting to come together and everyone's trying to get their own way to the throne um but eric man speaking of game and and, and thrones and eric man your thoughts on renera now again correct me if i'm wrong in the chat and, and of course uh, g and eric but i believe we're a year removed from episode three uh from different she hints had of, the baby so yeah yeah I think it was, the baby right. don't look more than like a like still newborn Kind yeah, I th well, so. I think that's a, yeah, I think so. Aegon is now three, and then we know right. Allison was pregnant last week, so that baby is now here with us. Uh, right. but Eric, man, your thoughts on the, the courting of Renera and her just shooting down man after man and, and really kind of exploring her sexuality this episode? Yeah, I mean, uh, she's she reminds me a lot of Daenerys, and like not just yes. for the yeah. obvious reasons, like right, not, right. obviously she looks a lot like her, but I mean, mm -hmm. also just her attitude and her kind of stubbornness and she just sort of doesn't want to be told what to do and she's just kind of going to do things her own way and even even from the start it's sort of she reminds me a bit of daenerys almost mixed with Arya, mm, in a yeah. way like mm -hmm. um yeah for similar reasons and uh yeah i, I like I'm, i like how much she, they're playing into the fact that she is a teenager and especially these last two episodes really yeah. like she almost actually seemed more mature in the first two in a way and then she she definitely kind of took some she definitely after, uh, after, uh, yeah, yeah. After her dad right. went innocent, so it's just she's she's just not having it so yeah no i love her attitude and everything um i think it was funny how she seemed to like actually she i think she mentioned that she actually liked the guy who was kind of being a dick to all the people like trying to wet her uh yeah 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 and uh but then it was funny to see that guy just get slaughtered by the kid little kid man <laughs> <laughs> david versus goliath <laughs> yeah so. a little kid man uh he came in and, and it was just he, he had some pretty good conventions man and, and he obviously can hold his own but uh go ahead i'm sorry what were you saying there oh yeah no and i just uh i think definitely as as like kind of petty as she sort of seemed these last couple episodes you can kind of get where she's coming from but also in episode episode two i think is still like her best moment where she like just flies to dragonstone oh, and just like yeah i don't know like that's what i mean i'm like uh maybe that, that that might be my favorite one i don't know like 
Um, oh yeah, I didn't I didn't get to see all the stream last week, but so so you didn't like. Uh, hope you don't mind me asking you. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Episode three. Yeah, so the episode to me, uh, and, and again, I know you've read the books, uh, Eric, and, and all this stuff, but to me, it did, I, it was a two year war. Uh, and I just didn't feel like the way that the conclusion to this war, uh, this, this wasn't satisfying. Like I, I was, we're, uh, as an audience member, I was led to believe that the the crab king or the crab feeder was this, you know, uh, smart strategic lord and kind of has all these plans and he just gets taken out in a heartbeat and 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 just I don't know it just felt a little rushed to me as far as the ending yeah. goes again this whole build up I, build up that yeah felt I guess satisfying you know I can totally see where you're coming from for me I guess there since it is based on flood which is like literally a history book right sort right. of fits in with that's sort of like a caveat of I guess just this whole kind of pace it's moving at mm-hmm and uh, I guess really, yeah, the story was never really about the crab feeder. That right, was really, right. that was just an obstacle for Damon to overcome to his narrative. Really, I mean, yeah, the crab yeah. feeder never really meant to be the next Ram Fulton or the Night King or something. I don't think so. But yeah, yeah I can see what you mean. Yeah, and, and again, understanding that now and totally get where you're coming from. I was just hoping for a little bit more of a, uh, a satisfying conclusion and, and and all that stuff. But tossing it to you, G, in regards to again the uh, as Eric said, this I don't want to say she was immature in this episode, Renera, but I think she right. was very rebellious. I think rebellious yeah. is maybe the good word because as Eric kind of alluded to, you know, the last few episodes, she's been told what to do, where to go, get married, have a, you know, going down that path that the women are, are told to do during this time. But she was very rebellious in this episode. And from this opening right. scene, she's just sitting on the throne just being like, this is a waste of my time. I, I'm going to make my decisions the way I want to. But what did you think about this kind of opening sequence with her and especially the little kid with the, uh, the sword? <laughs> um, I think... I think the opening se sequence was uh, really good just because it allows, like, you know, the characters to be their truest self. You know, this, she doesn't have anybody breathing down her neck in this situation. She's the most powerful person in the room. Yeah. And you get to see her true colors. So um, I, I like that aspect to it. Um, but I think as far as, like, her attitude as far as, like, the this episode compared to the previous ones i i feel like like we were saying before like since the game has like officially started and she understands like her position now that she's playing the actual game we're getting to see more of like okay like how how do you how do you really feel about like all these people you got to eat what you kill out here you know what i'm saying so it's it's one of those things for me where i'm like renera doesn't want to marry but i don't think like the political side has anything to do with it. I just think she doesn't see what happens, like, especially to women, you know what I'm saying? And that has really, like, took a toll on her, especially in making this decision, this life-changing decision. So, yeah. No, I agree with you, man. Um, again, and, and I think, you know, with maturity, you know, tends to come, you know, like you mentioned, she's the politics, the political side of everything and her just kind of putting that aside and kind of uh, speaking more to her her desires, as the king says a little bit later in this episode. So definitely um, some interesting development there. But and, and correct me if I'm wrong, too, Eric, this was uh, it was just, is this storm in, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the Baratheon's land that she was at in the beginning of the episode? Yeah, I was actually gonna. I was gonna ask you that. I I, I was like wondering that in the episode. I, sort I of believe up so. That. Yeah, yeah. I think she's definitely uh and and house the in the land of the Baratheons. Uh, and again, I love the little Easter eggs of seeing some of the Lannisters <laughs> last week and seeing the Baratheons this week, uh, and just that again that world building and stuff that we know. But speaking of stuff that we know, man, is is he's dragging so far and and Damon coming in and letting the Queen to be in the future at least to know that he's home. He is home after being missing for four years. Uh, Eric, man, that's a hell of an entrance, don't you think? And especially when he comes in. I knew when he came in with this look on his face and being all noble and nice, I'm like, dude, this guy is full of it. Eric, what did you think of the return of Damon after four years of being banned by his brother to the uh, Dragonstone? I mean, it's kind of like what I expected, but at the same time, I was almost, there was a part of me that was hoping maybe, like, I don't know, he wouldn't just be such an awful person right away <laughs> but um yeah he uh yeah it's pretty clear like now that he's basically everything he did was basically to just kind of ruin Rhaenyra's name yep and uh yeah I actually wasn't tried to like 
other people who watched it afterwards. I wasn't sure when that, at first if, if they actually did, you know, kind of do it. <laughs> nasty. But um, but yeah, we'll no, get I to guess, that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they they did. But he was. That's why he just sort of kind of leaves. Right. He, his only purpose there was just make her be seen, like yeah. out in this like kind of not to not exactly uh, coach and. Uh, Adding. so uh i think matt's missing it um yeah i love i love the scene with uh him and uh viserys like just beating him up and this is like exactly what damon wanted it's uh yeah i think he's the most unique character in a way almost he's the most complicated character i think we've had possibly in all of game of thrones like it's really hard to like he's definitely not a good dude but it's weird he's not He's not really like a Joffrey or a Ramsey either. That's a great point, man. He has been, and, and correct me if I'm wrong for everyone watching us live, uh, and, and of course, G and, and Eric, if you guys know, didn't George R. R. Martin say that he was his favorite, not his favorite character, but his favorite Targaryen, right? Like his, well, Or maybe it was his favorite character. Did, did I read I that somewhere or hear that? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I he's, know. I can't remember. It was somewhere he said this years ago that Damon's one of his favorites, to say the least. Um, and, and to your point, Eric, yeah, he's not a Joffrey. He's not a, a Ramsey, but he definitely has... I don't. It's just it's the wild card nature of the character that just makes him just so uh, not unsettling, but just so unpredictable. Uh, and you don't really know what he's thinking. Um, and and kind of going off of that, G, your thoughts on him again coming down, being back from uh, Dragonstone for four years, and, and again kind of being this more modest and, and monotone and a little bit more less wild card. A little it seems he he has matured, but again, like you said earlier, G, this was all part of a game. I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if that was modest. I feel like there was some signals being, you know, shown throughout the like some silent signals being shown throughout the episode. I love the beginning uh scene with Damon walking in, you know, swagged out, you know, people calling me the king of what what was it? The Driftlands? What was it? I forgot exactly what they called it, but you know Oh, the narrow seas. The, the narrow seas, seas. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he's like, I got this new title, but you know what? I'm coming to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming, I'm coming to you and I'm gonna present this to you because not only are you my king, but you're also my brother. And I just, mm. you know, I wanna I wanna be team Targaryen, I wanna be team dragons, you know. <laughs> so I, I I like that aspect of it. Um and it wasn't it wasn't until like later on in the episode where I felt like the game was actually being played. Um, because for him, it's like the war itself should have like boosted him some points in the polls, regardless. Like you hear the people whispering um, about him during the whole like interaction in the beginning uh, part of the of the uh, scene. So it's just like people are definitely talking, you know. Yeah, and yeah. as far as like the race right now, it's he's still not like there, but you can see he's steadily making his own climb. So yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, after you, you win a war, you know, unfortunately, King Viserys has never probably lifted a sword in his life in regards to going to war and having that type of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, backstory or having that type of respect from his people. So as you mentioned, yeah, at this point, Damon has won a war, um, has taken out the crab feeder and seems to have a lot more kind of, again, umph in his, in his step than, uh, than the king that's right now and even Viser uh, uh, Rhaenyra. So I definitely agree with you there with his stock, his name right now is definitely a little bit more uh favorable than some of the other people that are heirs to the thrones potentially so uh but eric do you have any thoughts on that man in regards to the the perception of of westeros do you think the people of westeros fear damon respect him you know uh don't like him how do you think the perception right now of westeros of, of the people think of damon i mean well definitely at the start of the show i think it was clear they were fearing him because uh he was kind of making sure of that with the king's guard mm -hmm. um yeah, I think right now, I mean, he kind of is the ideal heir, probably in a lot of people's eyes, like that don't that don't really know all the details, because you know he's male and he's not like a, a toddler, so <laughs> right. yeah, that, that might be all it takes for them. <laughs> he's a Targaryen, and you know he's he's a yeah male and an appropriate age. So I, my my guess is the general perception would be like. Yeah, he's probably a good fit for the throne. So, and he's, yeah. you said this kind of like hardened warrior. Right. 
Right. I mean, and, and, and the person that I have on screen now, he, he probably hates every second of this. And I'm talking about <laughs> Otto. He's just like this mother. Man, I cannot keep him out of the way, which we'll get to a little bit later. But I, I, I found it very fascinating that Otto did not take the opportunity to really put Damon's name in the mud. When the question mm. became uh, to what happened with my daughter and Damon, you know, obviously the king was doing, you know, all, all up in the airs and all that. But as soon as Damon told the king that it was true, I thought that would have been a perfect time for Otto to really just bury him six feet under. But he really uh, he kind of missed his opportunity there to really take advantage of that. But maybe, again, it's all part of his schemes. I'm, I'm very curious to know what Otto is going to do now with uh, the firing or whatnot. But again, man, whenever Otto and Damon are in the same room, I just I just want them to just fight. <laughs> and we all know who's going to win that war. But I just, the tension, and again, I think Eric mentioned it earlier, as far as Matt Smith, everyone he goes against, whether it's Renera, King Viserys, every one of his scene partners, he's just, just such a ferocious and, and uh, incredible uh, uh, actor. And, and this episode, to me, just really said it all. But uh, tossing it to you, G, in regards to the king and talking about you know him kind of happy his brother's home. And, and listen, King Viserys cannot hold his liquor, man. That man gets a couple <laughs> drops of wine in him. He's just, he's a mess, man. He's a mess. Uh, but again, Damon, and I said he was kind of my He's just kind of sitting there being, you know, keeping it to himself, not drinking as much of his brother. And, and again, look at the face. Look right. At the face, right. Look at that face. <laughs> this is not a, a guy that was ripping people's uh, uh, private parts off in episode one or taking his uh, unborn or his dead uh, cousins or uh, uh, nephew's dragon. This is this seems like a good guy. But again, this is all the front. Um, but tossing to you, G, the conversation that I want to have is, is just whenever we see Renera and Damon having their, they're speaking in their, their tongue, mm. just the, their, their scenes, their moments, your thoughts on these two and, and just their chemistry. Um, I think, I think their chemistry is a one um, as far as like, just, you know, you could tell that from, you know, episode one, how much Rhaenyra, um, not only just like revered Damon, but also like respected him. And, you know, when you see Damon and you see her dad, it's just like two complete opposite types of people, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, I think with, I think one thing that really stuck out to me, and maybe it's just this series in a whole, is that like a lot of, a lot of it is unspoken like it's just a lot of looks mm -hmm. you know and that's mm -hmm. very like a lot more powerful than i initially had thought it was going to be you know what i'm saying because i kept saying I'm like man y'all just keep looking at each other y'all ain't saying nothing but mm -hmm. I, it's still good you know and you just like no like especially like uh going back to uh when uh king viserys named allison as his as his queen that look oh sent chills down your chills down your spot because just like man like mm -hmm. oh my gosh this is actually happening so um i think i think body language and just you know damon don't gotta say much you know what i'm saying he's just yeah. gotta sit there smile and 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 move accordingly so right that's that's what i'm feeling about it I agree. I agree. And and Eric, a question I have for you, man, and, and one of the developing relationships in the last few weeks, it's something that started off so pure, so innocent, and kind of unfortunately kind of went sour once a decision was made. But uh, Eric, your thoughts on this relationship, and particularly in this episode between Renera and Allison, there definitely seemed to be for the first three episodes to me, they seem, I know that uh, Allison's like, I guess in the book, she's nine years older than Renera, but I don't think that it's much of a gap in their age in this show, maybe a couple years, three to four, maybe at the max. But this episode to me, Allison, she definitely, we talked about, you know, Damon's great, Renera's great, Viserys, but her maturity in this episode to me, especially when she's, and it seems that their friendship is kind of rekindling. Your thoughts, Eric, on this Allison and Renera relationship, can it ever be restored? Can it be repaired? And your thoughts on, on, on their performance? in this episode i mean like like every actor in the show i think they're killing it i mean that, that's one thing you can never criticize game of thrones or it was the dragon on i think yeah is the acting mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and uh as far as yeah allison um i yeah i was actually just having read the book and stuff i was i was almost surprised at how like allison's probably like the most i don't know like most pure character in the show so far right so far, yeah, I'm gonna say but, so far, um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, go re having read the books, like especially since it's just like I said, like a history book and everything, and you kind of get the picture. So that's that's not that's not Allison in the book. So, mm. <laughs> so I'm I've been kind of just waiting every episode to see when like what you said you're saying is like starting here, 
like it's gonna happen because I've just been waiting for things yeah. to fracture hard and uh yeah I like I don't know I don't want to say too much but like to me like Allison I'm, <laughs> I'm expecting her to be like the Cersei of the show Ooh, that gets me excited uh, man okay, that gets me okay. excited once we get to Olivia Cook, at least probably that's probably yeah, I would imagine yeah, because uh, and and that's why I'm so excited. I've, I've been I've been a little bit nervous, and I've talked about it in the past and made a couple different videos on it. I'm I'm still a little bit nervous about that care the actor switch because I I'm so invested in the in the young actresses, especially Renera as, as well as uh, you know Allison. So I'm still a little bit nervous. I'm more excited to see Olivia Cook than I am to see um, the replacement of of Renera, But you know I'm I'm pretty sure they're going to knock it out of the park. But yeah, man, as you said, Eric, the little bit that I do know about Allison just from a little bit of research before the show started, yeah, I, I can definitely see her. The tides changing in her um, her personality, her attitude her games uh, being played. I'm really looking forward to seeing that side of the character. And I think Olivia Cook is going to just absolutely knock it out of the park. But going back to, again, this conversation between uncle and his, uh, his niece, man, again, I, I felt so bad for Venera because it was just like a spider in, in, in the web. She was just in the yeah. web of Damon. Cause he was just from very jump, just again, being so um, again, kind of, Letting her know the way of the marriage and how you have to marry, but you 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 can make your own decision. And again, it's just like planting these seeds. I, I don't know if, if the word if, if, if kind of grooming her in a certain extent, especially when we get to the scenes that we'll talk a little bit about later. But gee, man, again, just talking to Matt Smith and and again, this the the lies, the deception, and how easily he can manipulate her. Yeah, Matt, Matt Smith is killing it. Like he, I didn't, I didn't like him in Morbius, but he killing, he killing House of the Dragon. <laughs> what he was, the, he was, what's his name? Uh, he was the best. I can't think of the character. He was the best part of Morbius. Morbius, if you ask me, he's, he's, he, he kept me entertained. Like at least. the best and worst part. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. It's like I'm, I'm half and half with it, but it's just Morbius was bad. But I mean, Damon, it's, 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 it's like. It's like if it's a snake, it would have bit you. I don't know a better way to describe it. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the way that he is speaking to uh, Rhaenyra in just like a calm tone. It's different from how everybody else talks to her. So right. she, she feels like, he, like a you know an adult essentially. Right, yeah. right, and and everybody else it's always like do your duty do this do right. that you know right. and with him it's like you got options like he's, you can do this cool uncle. right yeah right exactly cool uncle and <laughs> it's it's a thing that's like one thing i that i find similar in renera and daenerys is that curiosity she like she's renera's always going to test the water she's going to find yeah. out yep. you know exactly <clears throat> you know how uh or what you know is is being discussed and it, it makes sense you know later on in the episode when she just steps out you know what i'm saying yeah. they, they get on the town with no question and just it's there for the adventure yeah. you know so um i think they're killing it and uh yeah yeah i agree and, and just from a simple uh a blocking of this scene and and just again just seeing how she's like almost chasing him throughout the episode he he's constantly kind of leading her on and, and she's like you mentioned she's so curious about him you know it's just like right. my uncles he's just he's so mysterious he's so cool i want to know more about him and again it's just all a part of his plan to slowly but surely um get his way and I think after this episode, her name will definitely be tar tarnished. I don't think the, mm -hmm. the people, we already know how the people feel about her, as we saw in this episode. No one really believes in her. No one really thinks that she can be the queen. And now with these rumors, and we know how rumors can spread in Westeros, it can go a long way, can get people's heads chopped off in some cases. So, yeah, he, um, he might have looked like he lost in this episode, but I think at the end of the day, he got exactly what he wanted, which is now Aegon is, is definitely looking more like to be the king versus Rhaenyra being the queen. Um, but thoughts, any, any thoughts on that, Eric, again, on uh, just Matt Smith and as well as him just manipulating his niece and just literally just taking her on this path of, of destruction? Yeah, well, I think he's he's trying to, like, take her down so that, so that he's like her only option basically right and it's gonna be basically those two <clears throat> versus the world right like um and yeah i do think i think like you said how he's got exactly what he wanted yeah so is that that scene even the more i think about it when he's like on the floor being kicked by viserys that almost reminds me of like the scene i mean 
a much like more mild version, but it reminds me of that scene in the Dark Knight almost. Like, uh, I think Batman, he was going there. Like, yep. Mm-hmm. The Joker and the Joker's like, oh, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the shit kick out of him. He's like, mm-hmm. he's like, he's happy because he knows yep. he's, he's things are going his way. Checkmate. Check yeah exactly, so, and that's why I, I don't I don't know if there's a, an episode that's going to really emphasize Damon and his 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 backstory and kind of his mindset. I'm just so fascinated by that character, like you mentioned a bit earlier, Eric, and I'm just want to know more about like was he ignored as a kid? Was he um, beat up as a kid? Was he abused as a kid? Like I just want to know like where this this side of him comes from, man. I'm so curious. Yeah, so so I, curious. <clears throat> I don't remember like off the bat of my head <laughs> exactly like if, uh, if they go too much into that when he's like younger, but yeah, I yeah. guess basically he's always as like it's shown in the show, he's always felt like he's been passed over mm-hmm. and he hasn't been taken seriously. So he just sort of just wants to like, kind of, like you said, always be, he wants to like test the waters. And right. Right. Kind of- I mean, it's a lot of parallels between him and his niece, man. They have a lot yeah. in common, uh, as you just mentioned, as far as kind of over being being looked over, being ignored or always being told what to do. Uh, and, and I can definitely see why Renee gravitates towards him, because, again, there's so much that she can relate to with him. And they have a lot in common in that sense. But before we move on, we have another one of my guests who's joining us here in a bit. And I have a, a couple other people want to join. So we're going to um, have like a rotating panel uh, throughout tonight's episode. And again, I appreciate Eric and, and G and, and we're going to continue to have them on for a little bit longer and get their thoughts but let me bring in our next guest here the one and only meg looking hey, beautiful as always how you doing tonight You're- thanks i'm excited hey y'all i was having technical difficulties oh no worries don't worry yeah, i've mean, been listening in no no <laughs> worries uh meg we we've kind of we're like halfway through the episode and kind of broke down some of the scenes but just kind of getting back and just kind of jumps in the conversation your your initial thoughts of this episode and your thoughts on damon stirring that tea tonight you know how I feel about Damon. But uh, City Girls Up One. No. <laughs> City Girls Up One. Everyone's all shocked and appalled. I'm like, come on. I mean, such a Khaleesi thing to do because it kind of reminded me um, to take it back to that first, those early seasons of Game of Thrones, that shock mm-hmm. factor when mm-hmm. Khaleesi took con- um, control of uh, Kyle, what is it, Drogo? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, it was giving me those vibes. Like mm. I'm, I'm the queen. I, I'm taking ownership over my own body because that's what it is. That's what they hate, right? Like if she was popping out those babies and stuff for one of her little brothers or something, you know, mm. it would be fine and dandy. If she's being cut open like her mama was cut open, you know, it'd be fine and dandy. But no, she's taking ownership. City girls up. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I was here for it. Um, I do feel like those scenes were a little long, like taking all the armor off and stuff. I feel like that scene could have been like cut in half and we got something else more politic. And it did go on a a little bit long. It, it was giving me um it was giving me hero gasm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, the, I mean that that episode yeah that, that's a whole other level of uh uh oh, we. sex on TV yeah yeah that's yeah, yeah definitely yeah. give me hero gasm they dragged it a little bit yeah yeah no <laughs> I mean Renera definitely explored sexuality tonight in, in many different ways two times in one night and in, in, in some cases so uh but Eric man get, tossing it back to you we're on this the scavenger hunt Eric and again. My whole thought on this episode is 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 um, Damon just continued to lead her on, just mysterious, just you know, go down this path. And she she, you know, took the bait, man. And we see the scavenger hunt going on, man. Did you? What did you think, man? Did you think Renera was just? I think a little bit of Renera. She was she she wanted to play these games. She was all about it, Eric. What did you think, man? But yeah, she she's totally got like an adventurous spirit, and you know, she uh she's fascinated with her uncle um, yeah. in a weird way. But um, you can see that since episode one. So it feels like yeah, she's just been waiting for uh, someone to kind of just I don't know, I guess take her on some kind of adventure where she doesn't have to be kind of acting like a princess and stuff all the time and right and i loved i love seeing kind of you know the underbelly of king's landing and it reminded me a lot of like the yeah of, of like aria and bravos where she yes. goes, 
all those plays, right? Of, of, I love I love seeing the common folk because yeah. we never really get their lives. Well, I mean, we do, but we don't. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I love seeing the common folk in, in fantasy world. Like I'm like I feel like um, Rings of Power is doing that a lot. I'm not gonna lie, Elliot. It's different, but I finished all the episodes of Rings of Power and it's. It's growing on me. It has a place yeah. in my heart. It'll never be House of Dragons, but it is. I'm allowing it to be what it is, and I'm a fan. I'm I'm soaking it up. Yeah, I still got. I'm st- still have to watch episode two yeah, and three. I'm a little yeah, bit behind. I, I, I agree. I ain't even start. With you. I'm yeah. power. It's like <laughs> yeah. It's it's really it's like it's pretty good for what it is, but at the same mm-hmm. time, like House of the Dragon being on at the same time is like not making it look the best. Yeah, I like. Yeah, like I said, I like a dash of group fun. I just wish we got some Valerian people in the group fun. You know, I want to see some white locks. <laughs> yeah, they've been at <laughs> I mean, the last uh, week or two. Yeah, be, I mean, they did uh, pretty much confirm that she's going to be marrying uh, Lenore. Lenore. Yeah, Lenore, right. Lenore, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, hopefully we we will definitely get the the white dreadlocks back and Corlys he's been in a, he's been in my A for you know we saw him briefly last week but we yeah I'm excited to kind of get them back and hopefully get back in the good graces of the of the king which speaking of the king G I mean I thought Viserys would have been a, a dead man yeah too, me too you know? I'm surprised how he's able to linger on he's like a, a zombie at this point yeah I, that's why I feel so bad for Alicent because it's just like it's like sex with a corpse. Exactly, really? like yeah. living <laughs> a living corpse. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you could tell she was just like out of her mind. Like the king himself, like, yeah. I feel I still feel like she has like you know love for him, but it's more so more so just to what to where everything else is going on. I feel like like with uh Rhaenyra like sneaking out, she finally got to see like the real world, you know, yeah. like how people yeah. really feel right. about just the throne you know and it was one of those things where I, I didn't like at that point i didn't feel like she was getting manipulated at that point i felt like it was more so like let me show you what you, what you don't see on a normal day base so you can get more perspective on the world because yeah like with damon he's been passed up you know his whole life and he's been in these circles and like you, you know perception is everything right in 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 you know uh game of thrones and stuff like that so like from damon's side i I could see the manipulation but from rhaenyra's side i still feel like she is like you know wanted to be there not rather than you know just feel like she got tricked i feel like yeah yeah yep you know so yep yeah. I think she's always had that curiosity, but she never going back to Eric's uh, comparison to Night, Dark Knight. She just needed that push, right? right. She just needed that the kind of that person to kind of bring her all, bring it to, to the streets. <laughs> she was for the streets tonight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think Damon is that again that that wild card, that fireball that uh, pushes her to kind of go out, literally go outside the gates and see another side of the world. And yeah, I don't. I think the manipulation kind of ended at this point in the episode because I totally agree that she she wants to know more. She wants to explore more on various different accounts but meg your thought again on this uh this night of escapades and being on the streets and, and this new new side of the world that renair has really been uh not exposed to her whole life whole new world i'm thinking about how um you know early early in the first in the earlier episodes you know she was the king's cupbearer right and she was mm. always around and she was always like picking up on the political jargon and stuff like that. And um, in that way, it prepared her for leadership. But I felt like it's a disservice for her to not have been exposed, I guess, to the common folk, I guess, more often throughout her life so that a big, you know, um, culture shock like this or something wouldn't have happened if she had been a woman of the people as often as she was in the political back door, the Mm. back rooms. So, um, I mean, some people are saying Damon corrupted her. I don't feel like he corrupted her. The world exists. That's the world that um, she's leading. It's out there, you know, so you can't shield it from her. Um, And I'm here for the the coming of age. Seems like she's gonna have to pay the cost, and 
Yeah. I think she's going to get out of whatever that cost may be. I'm nervous about what that <laughs> Is that T? Is she going to yeah. is that T uh is she gonna Literal. take the T? Is she gonna pass it up? And I said we, you know, tonight's watch along, uh, and Eric, I know you might know the question the answer it is, but I, I think that there might be a, a child on the way. Um in regards to and, and I think that's gonna be so juicy if they do go to that path. Well, is it Damon's child, is it Kristen's child? See, we know that like Damon doesn't have crabs, so no. <laughs> 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 ah, nice, nice, one. One. nice one, nice one. <laughs> uh, but I guess get it. And, and by the way, again, we have another guest coming in. Um, so we're gonna again, we're gonna have a, a rotation coming here in a little bit. But Eric, I want to get your thoughts, man, on uh, probably the most controversial scene. Uh, and again, uh, that's why I love that you're on tonight, Eric, because I know uh, from your book knowledge. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the the book, they never really explicitly said that Damon and Renera had a physical relationship. They kind of alluded to it, um, but in tonight's episode, they kind of uh, straight up answered that question in regards to their intimacy in this scene. Uh, and take it away, Eric. Your thoughts on on the the moment that I think a lot of us are going to talk about for the rest of the week, which is Damon taking his niece to the to the whole house and having some fun times. See, so I actually interpreted it that, that they kissed and stuff, but then he kind of just like left her. Yeah, yeah, me yeah. too. I, I don't think I'm gonna. Yet. I'm not gonna pull. Obviously, I'm not gonna pull up on the screen. Elliot's right. 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 I'm. I'm looking at. I'm literally looking. I'm gonna rewatch the scene while you're talking, Eric, because I thought. And again, when I was watching it tonight, I, Elliot was distracted. Yeah, <laughs> have a dislike in my face hosting the show, but I, I thought that they, uh, you know, so not to I'm, be explicit, but it looked like it was just the tip, maybe. But I don't. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think they did. I don't think they did anything yet. Okay. But, right. Because oh, no, yeah. we we not already seen he done had struggles already. So right. something else might be going on there. We don't know yet. <laughs> oh, Masseria, you know Elliot. You know. I'm always wondering what she is up to because Masseria is not going to catch me slipping. She's not going to sneak up from the back. when it, Whenever she comes, whenever that is, I'm going to be ready for her. I don't trust her. Yeah, no. She, I mean, she has a spy. We know she has a little boy. That was the, the same little boy that uh, caught uh, Renera. She was the one that gave him the money. Um, so it almost seemed like she was kind of plotting and scheming and, and, and knew what was going on. I'm looking at the scene, y'all, right now. And again, um, it's pretty dark <laughs> still. I'm not, you know. But I mean, I don't know, uh, G. Uh, your thoughts? Uh, again, I don't want to do a play by play, but there's there's right. pants down. There are. <laughs> Motions I'm, I'm, being had I'm not saying now. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they ain't try. I'm saying I don't. I'm think saying, it. and I don't think it worked. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> because Elliot immediately after, remember, he runs off, and right, she's yeah. like, "Damon, Damon." So I took, I interpreted her taking down um, the knight. What's the knight's name? Uh, oh, Kristen. Um, Prince Charming. I was thinking of her taking down him, you know, out of frustration of, you know, what <laughs> Uncle Daddy couldn't get. He got yeah, dirty. Got about that. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, yeah, regardless <laughs> of what happened, I, yeah, I don't think it went all the way. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, I think it was uh again uh uh for my for the put the kids to bed. I think there was a little a little something something there. Again, I'm, I'm um you know, but anyway. Whatever uh, it was, it was too yeah. much. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, kissing your 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 niece and uh, right. all the the stuff that was going on, I mean, that's you know, they the, the line has been crossed. That's There's freaked out. Targaryen. Freaked out. Yeah, I mean that's Targaryens for I you, mean, though, right? Like, I'm just gonna say this. Like, Targaryen. Like, like if this bothered people, like, oh my god, you're not ready for what's coming. Oh boy. Oh, oh, boy. Cool. Yeah, Elliot. They didn't. <laughs> they stopped just, just shy. I saw some people in the chat. I don't know if y'all covered. He immediately ripped the hat off. Remember, as soon as they went into the dungeon. He yeah. yanked off her hat because some people missed that. I know we were all um, delighted by Elliot's facial expressions. Oh, so you're talking about when they went? Yeah, I mean, you, you can hear yeah. um, um, you can hear the 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 other people. They were oh, the Renera, the princess, the princess is here. Um, I so yeah, I mean, again, the rumors have, have definitely started tonight. Um, yeah, I'm just I don't perceptions, know, I think, everything, man. Yeah, it 100 is. <laughs> That's all he needs. I, 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 it's it's laughable though. Like it's now it's all this, you know. But when the guys were doing what the guys do, you know, right? 
They talked you know, about it too. Nobody, yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm glad yeah. they mentioned that, but I, yeah. I just thought it was interesting. I'm, I was like, you know, I got Rhaenyra's back. You know, you know, I, I got, I got her back. And so does Damon. And in, uh, <laughs> in many different ways. Um, well, speaking of uh, um, <laughs> Meg, you, you mentioned the knight in shining armor. Um, Eric, I want your thoughts, man, on Chris, Sir Kristen Cole. And, and so I mean, we, 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 we speculated about it, you know, when we first met him. Uh, you know, there was obviously some type of chemistry. She was very, you know, happy to see him. Good looking guy, can beat ass. He's a knight. You know, she a lot of a lot of good traits to the guy. But I didn't think he – I thought he was going to be no one like Princess. No, I can't do this. But, you know, He's it so happened, quiet. man. See, yeah. I can't I can't get behind him because I need Rhaenyra. I need her to have – a mate, not necessarily a political equal, but someone who that she can have robust conversation with, who can challenge her. I need mm. her to have that, you know, that right hand. And like, he's nice and all, but girl, like, we need somebody with substance. Um, I feel <laughs> like I don't, I don't know anything he said besides um, what he told Damon. Perhaps he remembers yeah. them on the yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think there's a, a sense of, because he mentioned, I can't remember what episode it was, it was episode two or three, when he mentioned how much it meant to him that he, she was giving him this opportunity because where he comes from, uh, kind of mm -hmm. looked down upon. So I think he's, I don't think he's uh, as, as uh, I don't say noble, but I think there's a little bit more bite to him than he's appearing to be, but I think he's just very, yeah. very appreciative at the moment. But uh, Eric, man, your thoughts on, the, on these two, uh, you know, doing the deed. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I, it was just one of those things. Again, I was kind of waiting for it to happen. <laughs> yeah. So, um, just because, uh, yeah, and I would say, um, I don't know, actually the actual scene itself. I know, I know, some people might think it goes on a little long or something, but I thought, I don't know, as far as Game of Thrones, you know, sex scenes go, I thought that was actually one of the more tender ones. Yeah, yeah. Point. Oh, especially yeah. considering the episode, the the few scenes ago, we saw obviously yeah. uh, Allison not being enjoying yeah. her night with her husband. So yeah, I definitely agree with yeah. you there. So like, I don't know. um, right right now, right now he seems like he could be like the noblest character on the show. He seems to even look yeah. like Jon Snow, mm -hmm. but but um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, just knowing some where things are kind of going, um. I think you're you're right to assume that uh, that's it's there's going to be more uh, there's more, more to him than just the yeah the knight the knight in the, shining armor yeah I, I don't think he's going to be just like the show Jon Snow yeah and that's what I love about the show well, all the he, he's like, below like, Jon Snow at this point he just you know. He just I mean, glimmers. It's like I, I I feel bad for him though, because it's like like yeah. yes, yeah, like, really yes, like you coming up, now. you coming up, right? You mm -hmm. coming up on mm -hmm. multiple levels at this point. But it's just like first he was just like, nah, we can't do this, right? But it's like mm -hmm. you gave me everything I have right now. So at least I can do least thing I could do, you know what I'm saying? Is this right. hot but, take, hot take. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, it's like he a rebound. So it's Ooh. like on multiple levels, like this is no, uh, this is no. mixy. This boo, is mixy. Boo. He is the <laughs> luckiest man in the kingdom. She has shepherds and lords or whatever lined up out the door. He is sugar man. Glance at her beauty. He has nothing to be sad about. He is the luckiest man in the kingdom. <laughs> I'm not saying he need to be sad. I'm saying like outside looking in, mm. I'm like, dang. I'm like, yo, hey. You, think, you gotta do you what think, you gotta do. What, what, what's what's that danger? mean? Is he in danger? What's, I don't think he's in danger. Yeah, I just, yeah. I, don't I mean, that. he did. It's just like you got to see it through. Like break his own by doing that. That's true. See That's a good point, boy. Eric. That is a good point. Um, and also, too, I mean, he did. That was Renera's again, the Damon, two seconds, if anything, uh, uh, one second. Um, that was her first time, right? That was yeah. she got the flower with that. That was her first, and and that goes back to what Eric was saying as far as the intimacy and kind of the the tenderness of it because that was her first time. I'm glad that it wasn't again forceful, very the Damon situation again, turning her around, being in this brothel like your first time being in a, in a whorehouse, having you know right. having your virginity law. So again, it does kind of speak to the differences of the men uh, as far as their approach to different things. But yeah, I do appreciate the the tenderness of it all. But again, I'm very excited to learn more about him and see what kind of. Uh, personality has and, and see if he might get jealous if he has jealousy of what Renera around other men or women maybe i don't know what the yeah, future holds for I, her 
I was just gonna. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's so much that there's more to him right now that we're not seeing. It's just right. it's just one of those cases where, with a lot of these characters, same with Allison, like the world's gonna really like kind of ruin them. I mean, in the day, that's the Game of that's, Thrones, Eric, and yeah. I, that's what I love about it, man. The, the the world does some some things to these characters. And I guess, um, and, yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, that's the thing with with this show too, like. As much as people say in Game of Thrones, there's really no heroes and villains. I think in that show there were kind of in some cases. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Like I but, mean, um, yeah, I think yeah. I think in this show that's going to be very true. Actually, I think everyone is a shade of gray in this show. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, like Game of Thrones, even George R. R. Martin said was kind of more like like high fantasy, basically, like mm-hmm. that kind of kind of hero's journey. And this is more going to be like Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it, man. Uh, I'm gonna pull up your favorite character, uh, Meg, which is uh, Massandra. Is that her name? If I'm not mistaken. Um, Mysteria, I think. Mysteria, Mysteria. Yes, thank you, thank you, Mysteria. Uh, Meg, take it away. Your thoughts on her, her games, her. What, what is she? Oh up? yeah, I forgot this scene. What was this scene? Well, this is when she woke. Damon woke up. After his wild nights, and she um, just pretty much said, "You know, you I, I used to be your prisoner." Now it seems like the the dynamic of the two, the power shift has happened. Like it seems like mm-hmm. she, yeah. did, did she own the brothel? It seems like she has some type of uh, some new position where she has again. She has a little boy, little little snitches on the street, and she seems to be have a, a, a position of power. Like I don't know, does she own the brothel? If I'm mistaken, let me rewatch this scene. But your thoughts uh, of this scene here, uh, Meg? Um. I mean, they didn't really give us much. I'm just waiting. I feel like they're giving us a little bit of foreshadowing when I went back and watched the first couple of episodes. And um, just to compare her to, I'm sorry, what's Prince Charming? I forgot his name already. Uh, Kristen Cole. Kristen Cole. Mm -hmm. Kristen Cole, okay. So that is now Rhaenyra's lover, right? And in contrast, See how, see how Mysteria acts versus how Rhaenyra's lover acts. Like, do you, mm-hmm. do you see the comparison I'm trying to make? It's like you mean like opposite. she's more of she she kind of offers more in terms of like actual like conversation and stuff. Right, right, mm-hmm. uh, right, exactly. But I don't know. Um, but don't, yeah, I've been. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna say I've been, yeah, I've been kind of waiting to see what they do with her because, because in the book she's kind of portrayed almost like, like I haven't seen any hint of this so far in the show. But again, the interesting thing about Fire and Blood, it's written like a history as if it's like a history in that world, like the characters mm-hmm. would read. So the people oh, okay. writing it are like maesters. So sometimes it's like not necessarily fully reliable, like internally. So I'm interested to see like she's kind of painted as almost like a witch in those books and uh mm-hmm. like almost like a melisandre type character and I'm, I'm wondering so far i haven't seen that like i was actually expecting her to be dabbling with like some kind of supernatural dark, stuff in dark magic. exactly exactly but so, but so far i mean uh, so far i haven't seen any hints that she's actually like dabbling in black magic or anything but but I have she definitely. gave me more of Varys vibes than anything yeah but yeah especially yeah. tonight again her little birds her little spies yeah. the yeah. Bible. i got the bible who was that? Oh, you guys saw it already, but Eric never saw that I have the Bible. Oh. Game of Thrones? Oh, Game of Thrones. Nice. Oh, it's, oh, it's like the Game of Thrones Bible? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just, I, was, I didn't like look closely and I thought you were just saying you have the Bible. Is that like, the Bible? I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's random. <laughs> okay. right. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice, yeah, that's nice. awesome. I didn't even know that was a thing. I need to like look into that. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Well, listen, um, I got Mac going in, in, in and she wants to join here in a little bit. So um, I don't know if, if anyone uh, wants to volunteer to, to call it a night or uh, if you guys had a couple more words to say. But um, before we head out, who does anyone have any anywhere to go or does anyone want to volunteer to head out soon before we can rotate the panel? I'm good either way. I can stay or I can go, whatever, whatever works. Oh. All right. All right. Well, I would definitely want you back uh, for sure, Eric, because, again, I love uh, chopping it up with you and getting your knowledge on it, man. But before you head out, man, uh, why don't you let me know your your final thoughts of the episode and who and again, I know you have the book knowledge, but who do you think will be the next uh, Hand of the King? 
Uh, I can't really. <laughs> right, I know. I know you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's like, well, I know. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, dude, I guess this general your overall thoughts on this episode. Yeah, I mean, um, like, it, it was definitely it was the most kind of just like deep kind of intrigue and like character dynamics kind of in full force, just like Game of Thrones at its peak. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I just I love seeing the way the characters play off each other and. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be really cool seeing uh, Otto come back with a vengeance. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Well, Eric, my friend, I'm so glad you were able to join us tonight, man. Uh, definitely want to have you back on, especially when we get closer to some of the stuff that you know from the books and how it might compare or differ from the books. But again, I appreciate you, man. And before you head out, Eric, why don't you again let the people know where they can find your content, my friend? Okay, yeah. Well, you can just find me at uh, Eric Thorpe Reviews on YouTube and also Instagram and uh yeah, I mean, so so far I don't have any Game of Thrones content on um, on uh, on either. I do, I do have an an art account on Instagram called Game of Thorpes, which I do actually have like Game of Thrones drawings on there if that interests anyone. But uh, yeah, definitely. Well, again, Eric, man, I appreciate you. Uh, and no, guys, I'm not kicking Eric out. No, Eric is more than welcome to come back next week. Uh, I'm such a big fan of his and, and loved what he brought to the table tonight. So you guys will be seeing Eric again. This is not the last time. Yes, he's an excellent contributor, and I appreciate Thank you, Eric, man. And I definitely Thanks. hope to see you back next week, my friend. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's always just a matter of, like, if, if depending. Some weeks I have, like, people coming over for, like, Yeah, big, man, big you're, big you're the place to be. He's he's and the then, house party. Yes. And then, uh... <laughs> And then sometimes, like last week, I was just, I was just like, oh, I'm just spent after that battle. So, yeah, I hear so, you. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thanks so much for having me on. Nice, nice to meet, meet, uh, meet everyone here. And uh, yeah, take care. Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Have a good night, Eric. Okay, you too. Awesome, man. Well, hey, so I'll send it to you, G, uh, and we're going to bring in no. Mac here in a little bit while she gets situated. Uh, but toss it to you. Your thoughts on King Viserys and the the, the denial. When Varys still, or what I should say, Otto tells him about the rumors that he just immediately denies it. Your thoughts on this on the scene? I mean, he's the king, so his his like Damon said, his word is law at this point. I think it was only natural for him to do a huge like denial of. I thought it was going to be a lot more animated than it actually was, mm-hmm. just because of like you know once he realized like what Otto was really you know plotting on. Mm-hmm. But I think it's I think it's just you know. In that moment, he was more Rhaenyra's dad than he was the king. And it was just like, yeah. I can't believe you can't just say this and like not have somebody here to, you know, explicitly say and, and account for this, you know, because like you said earlier, like, you know, these type of rumors can, you know, be the, the death of you at this point. Right. Yeah. So um, I feel like I feel like this scene, it was I was expecting a little bit more from Otto just because I didn't think he would just, you know kind of shy away and you know not really say too much and just like i was just like man spit it out like you mm-hmm. know and i i wish i wish he was more direct in this because it would it would have <clears throat> you know set up better for what happens later on in their second conversation i agree i agree man and we got our our, our a couple more guests in the back room again we're going to probably rotate tonight uh since we got some 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 opinions being had tonight but the next guest here mac so excited to hear her thoughts. I've been reading the comments and Matt's got some differences uh, of an opinion. I'm so excited to hear her thoughts, but welcome back to the channel, Mac. How we doing? What's up? Happy to be here. Happy welcome, to welcome. be here. You're, well, I'm loving the backdrop. I'm loving the look. I saw the comments, so go ahead and let us know your thoughts, Mac. I, said, yeah, I know you thought differently of the king and some of the stuff that went down. Well, uh, you, you know, I always, I'm always in left field. You know, I kind of live in left field. So yeah, I got yeah. some difference of opinions about Damon. I think Damon loves Rhaenyra. I don't think this was the only issue I have is when he snatched that hat off. I was like, why would you do that? Yeah. I was like, why did you snatch that hat off? I don't, but I'm not sure if Damon is playing chess when it comes to Rhaenyra. I'm just not sold right. on that at this point. Um, right. And you guys know I'm always Team King. I know everybody else is he's weak and he's that, <laughs> he's this, but boy. I'll roll with the King, you guys. <laughs> Until next episode when he dies. That's when I, I think I gave yeah. him five. I think I yeah, gave him yeah. five episodes. You're right. next, I think you did. Yeah. He's gonna die um next episode, I think. But yeah, I'm riding with him. Every time he moves, I like the way the king moves. I do. I'm a fan. Mm. Um 
I thought it was interesting that the king and elephant share completely different rooms. I was like, huh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. went to go get her. I said, oh, he woke up a a, a servant in the mm-hmm. middle of the night to go, go get, get his, his wife. wife. Mm-hmm. I said, right. oh, man, I thought she just, you know, was there. But that was interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know why Allison said it was late. I don't know who she was. I said, what was she? What is she doing? She knows what time. Twitter. She knows what time it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought this episode was really a dichotomy about women and sexuality and sexuality yep. for work, you know, for, for, um, you know, you have to as duty versus pleasure. And I don't know that Rhaenyra knew that it could be for pleasure. I don't know. And mm. so I liked seeing her because I don't know if Damon thought this was going to freak her out, but it totally didn't. It just, it just awoken something, you know, it just woke yep. something up the, the and she went to, open. yeah, it did. It, yep. And she mm. went to go get it. And I thought, now this is interesting. I said, now this is, this got very, very interesting. Awoken yeah. the dragon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. I said, look at this. She's excited. She's like, what is this? She wasn't squeamish. She wasn't shot. Right. Yeah. No, no, she mm-hmm. was about that life. And I said, look at this. Yeah, she put around. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah, the Targaryens she put for you. Yeah. That's what makes Targaryens yeah. so different than anyone else. I wasn't mad. I thought, now yeah. this is interesting. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, what else? She, let's see. Rhaenyra just needs, I hate that her mother passed away because she needs some coaching. She needs someone it's, to go get PTSD. It's not so much she that she PTSD. can't move the way she's moving, but she needs mm-hmm. to be way more discreet about a lot of the things that she's done. That yeah. tantrum last week was a, was just a queen turnoff. Yeah. You can't do that in public. You can't sit up and have a tantrum because your little baby brother is having a birthday. You need to be able to go to the king and say, this is what it is that I want. Right. Da, 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 da. I'm not saying you can't sleep with your nights. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you need to move a little more discreet. You're right. in the streets in a costume for a reason. Says so like, what are you doing? And, and that's why I think like Allison appears more mature than her uh-huh. because mm-hmm. Allison doesn't throw temper tantrums no. in public. No, and right. She could have every right to sometimes, no. but she doesn't. She could I mean, have flexed on her. Her, tick, her little tick of you know picking at her fingers. She keeps up all that pent up energy. And, and and you know Eric mentioned it earlier. There's another side that we can look forward to seeing to her when she's going to let things out and maybe be more rebellious. But yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Mac. I I was just um. You're right. You're absolutely right. Ellicent moves different, but she Rhaenyra. I mean, I'm sure ladies have been sleeping with their servants and knights for years too. Look at Cersei. You know that's 100%. not. This is not mm-hmm. new. Right. Mm-hmm. It's the mm-hmm. way you move. Right. <laughs> it's the way you move. Now, what I'm saying is if you're going to drink the tea and you probably need to drink the tea, fill it up. Don't give back an empty bottle. You know, make <laughs> stuff make sense. She needs a little coaching. She needs, she needs a little bit of coaching. This is okay. not my favorite episode. It's did right. you put that in the chat to fill up the bottle? I probably did. I'm yeah. sure. Because I, I certainly, I was like, Philip, don't, if you're going to drink it, make sure you don't give back an empty bottle. Right. This is not my favorite episode. Um, I'll take actually any of the other ones other than this one. This is my least favorite. It was episode. my least favorite too. Wow. It was kind of wow. Somebody That's in the wild. chat was like, I'm bored. And I was like, I get it. Like I, I wasn't <laughs> bored, but I got it. I could see how somebody could be like, What are we doing? Like, this is slow. Yeah. No action. It's slow. And no it was action. Also, no, nah, this wasn't like I was, it, was, it felt very mild. Yeah. I was like, it, it wasn't even giving me hero gas. And I was like, eh. I was like, all right, I get it. You know, it was setting the scene, it was telling yeah. a story, right, but right. it wasn't, um, eh, eh. you know, I've seen Game of Thrones. We can do better. I don't know. I just feel like I need diversity in the house of horrors. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> there was a guy in the back. Oh, no, he was in the king's in the room with the with the king when the old boy showed up, when Damon showed up. I love Damon, guys. Saying. Love that guy. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I couldn't agree with you uh, with Meg let, and, and Mac Moore. I thought this episode had the one of, as far as action goes. Yeah, of course it was you know one shot of a dragon. We didn't get any hand in combat, but I thought the I can't remember who said it was either Eric or G. The, the games were played tonight, and that's yeah, the Game exactly. of Thrones were played tonight. Yeah, that's think enough, I feel like more games could have been played. I feel like both of the scenes ran a little long, and mm. we could have gotten some more dialogue. I don't know. Yeah, well, I feel like you're I feel right. Like if we, I feel like we had got like some um, Corliss in this episode. It felt more like that because they they spoke about it early in the episode where it's like he's forcing the king's hand at this point. Like, yeah, Damon probably would. They probably already talked about like, yeah, OK, I'm going to try to see if I can get Rhaenyra to marry me, basically. Um, and we're going to, you know, unleash this plot, this, this, plot, this plot right here. But with, you know, 
Corliss marrying off his daughter to another powerful like nation or whatever. I forgot exactly which one it was. That forces the king's hand to make Rhaenyra uh, marry his son. So I don't know. I feel like I feel like as far as the game itself, and and we're starting to see the players, you know, interact. Like it definitely got mixy. It's not my favorite episode. Yeah. I feel like the first episode was still my favorite because it just was mm -hmm. just like hitting like back to back to it back. It hit stuff. all the marks. Yep. Yeah. So it's 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 not my least favorite at this point. Yeah, gotcha, I am. Gotcha. Uh, well, you're right, though. You're right. Love, well, getting back to the kind of the, uh, the 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 moment here, and I think uh, I was tossing it to you, Meg. Your thoughts on the king, Viserys? He knew. I think he knew when he heard. He was obviously kind of being in denial uh, with Otto, but I think that he definitely knew what his brother was capable of. Uh, but more shockingly, was he, I don't think he think he didn't think that Renera would go down to those levels. But your thoughts on on the sense of denial, and do you think that he knew that this was a true? Oh yeah, he knew. Of course, he knew. And um, did anyone feel like when Damon came back that he was changed? And yeah. oh yeah, well, like I said, we talked about yeah. it earlier when he came in the scene, being all soft spoken and humbling himself and taking a knee to his brother. I knew he was not about that life. It was all a, you know, part of the game. Boy. Yeah. What about you, uh, G? What did you think about the uh, King Viserys in this moment and kind of the denial that he wanted to uh, show Otto at the scene? I think I think he's just frustrated at this point because you know, if if it wasn't for like like basically his own failure to have a kid, a son, mm -hmm. you know, none of this would really happen. And at least Very in true. his high, that's yeah. how I feel like that's how he feels. Right. And right. every time he looks at Rainier, not only does he see, you know, his former uh, wife and, and, and queen, but also it's just like, you still my little girl. They don't have the same relationship that they had prior um, to all this happening. And Rainier, like they went like what, three years without speaking or something like that, like not really having a conversation. Right. So at this point, I think he's just fed up with like, you know the the hissy fits and and just like he he understands like when there's duties this is like i'm just trying to do my best like he fighting for his life on this throne literally and yeah. it's just like renera is not helping him at all at this point but i don't feel like she like that's that's her priority in a sense like i don't feel like she has to do that but from his perspective he's just like man like, it's just one thing after another you know, like I, I thought we got everything, you know, all fixed. My brother came, gave me this crown and I'm I'm feeling good, you know, and it's just like, dang, what are we doing? Like, come on. I thought we I thought we was I thought we was here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. that's how I'm feeling. I hear you. I hear you. Um, Matt, your thoughts on, again, this the king and hearing these rumors and these lies, thinking there's a little bit of truth in there, thinking there's a little bit of, uh, you know, upset that his brother, that he just allowed his brother who was gone for a couple of years to come back in and just continue to wreck his life, destroy his life and destroy his daughter in the process. The brother coming in and the way that he received him in public in front of everybody was a fail. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I, that's one of the, I'm like, what are you doing? And I don't like where Rhaenyra was standing when all this was happening. It was as though she was standing in the crowd with the commoners, with the with the lesser thans. And mm. I'm like, look, at what point, do, she did finally have a seat at the table at one point, but she was, she looked like a spectator as opposed to being somebody of power and they need to fix that. That's starting to annoy me. Mm. But Damon was doing Damon. I, I didn't get the old, oh, this is soft, he's soft spoken. I just saw Damon being Damon. Every time I see Damon, I just kind of take him for what I'm seeing right there. I'm not digging too deep. I'm like, look at him. You know, here he comes with his swag. He didn't feel different to me. I was like, eh, there goes Damon. He's coming back with a crown. Like, if you don't get this piece of bones that have been tethered together, what is the crab claws that have been tethered together? Yeah. Damon, knock it off. He wants so much attention. Like, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? That's Damn why I mess with him, though. The king he loves just, he his just brother himself. so much. The king yeah. just loves his brother. He does not want to mm -hmm. harm his brother. He is yep. trying so hard to mm -hmm. not have to kill his, his brother. Yeah. But I wasn't. I'm like, eh. The king knows. Because the first thing the king said, the, Otto says, your daughter was seen as a pleasure house. Do you guys remember what the king said? I was like, did he just say that? He said, what, what about it? it? What yeah, of it? Yeah. Oh. He said, yeah. what was the first thing he said? He said, what of it? 
I said, oh, which I mean, she is. If, again, if my math is correct, she's 19 years old in the story. Yeah, she is a, she's, yeah she's, she's a, halfway through her life, so I yeah, get it. You know, yeah. I'm I'm here for it. But he he said, "What of it? <laughs> what of it?" I said, yeah. oh, the King Cole." I said, "The King is not tripping. That's not the issue." That, that might be the most right. like real yeah. scene he's ever had in the yep. show so far because it wasn't like what he nope. was nope. like. What do you? What of it? He said the other day. What do you mean? Right. Right. Um, he said so. <laughs> what's your what's your point? Get to it. And say, oh my goodness, say what I know he could, he could not spit it out. He was my lord. That's because uh, they know. Yeah, they yeah, know the right. king is related to Damon. What happened when that other man brought Damon that news? You don't bring those Targaryens. You don't bring news to them because yeah. you don't know what's about to happen. Um, he knew. He, That's he why knew. I thought he was going to offer more pushback. And as far as like, like he just wouldn't, he wouldn't say it. But at the same time, like that is the most reserved. I feel like we done seen Otto, and it's just like, yeah. like yeah. every time, so, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, every every time uh, Otto and Damon are in the same room, he just looking at him with them eyes, and it's just like, what did Damon do to you? <laughs> you know, for for you. <laughs> what do you mean? Just what did Damon him? do? Damon always causing havoc. Always. Damon always and Rhaenyra. It's got to be something deeper. It's got to be something deeper. Like I don't know, maybe maybe his maybe his wife is is the one that you know <laughs> that uh that was his daughter or something. I don't know, maybe. but I think I think honestly I think their hatred or at least uh, the hatred that I don't I think he just knows that if Damon gets in a position of power, this is going to be the end of the realm. I think that he wants him to be so far away from that throne as far away as possible that he just knows there's I don't know why I don't know why I put Damon on the throne. Facts. No, uh, no, no, no. Run Ooh, the check no. up. Put him on throne. <laughs> No, he is not said. a king that yeah, I, you know, when not. people talk about the king being weak and all that, I'm like, I would rather serve under that king than Damon yeah. for sure. I wouldn't mind Damon being his hand because he does kind of give the king a kind of a neat kind of balance, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, the crazy side. But no, no, Damon. Oh, no, he can't be on the throne. He's a little too impulsive. No, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be under him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just thought about this too. Me Lord, me Lord. <laughs> I just, I just thought about this too. Um, they said that uh, Otto served the last two kings, right? So all, so that makes sense. Like all the work that he done put in over the years, mm -hmm. Damon could just go ahead and rip it all away and right. just do right. whatever he wants to. So that makes sense. So Otto, but I said last, I think it was last episode. I was like, she needs to make a play for Otto because Otto is certainly coming for her for Rainier. But Otto's mm -hmm. brother is gonna be so mad when he finds out. Otto's brother is gonna be so because they mentioned his brother in this episode too, mm -hmm. and we saw his brother last week. I was like, oh last no. Week, yeah. mm -hmm. Um, but Rainier, I was waiting for Rainier. Rainier is starting to like you said, she's starting to play chess. Yeah. She she made a play yeah. right there for Otto because that was my biggest concern for her was Otto and his family trying to make his child and y'all be saying the king doesn't know the king is so stupid he was like no no he oh, listen i'll knows. give you something mac he he did a very sansa move tonight he definitely yeah. you know when he fires uh you know you. we'll talk about that but that was like like sansa you know it takes me a while but i finally eventually uh he knew catch up on things yeah he was like you think i'm stupid <laughs> I, I love the king you guys he, ain't having, he probably ain't no. had no answers though that's why he didn't say nothing he's yeah. like this man this man know more than me right now but right Right. Maybe maybe it'll rub off on me. <laughs> but well, cheer. look, guys, we, we got an, I got Johnny in the back room. I don't want to keep him back there too much. And again, I just why I, I don't want to have more than five on the, on the stream. But uh, we're going to bring you in here in a little bit, Johnny, uh, to get your thoughts on tonight's episode. But before we rotate the panel, I want to get you all's thoughts on this scene here, starting with you, Meg. Um, your thoughts on Renera and her ex best friend now stepmom and this moment that we saw for the first time Renera being a liar she she lies to um Alicent in her face in regards to what happened but your thoughts on this scene and, and this dynamic between the two who wouldn't lie who wouldn't lie in that situation Damon didn't <laughs> he straight up told his brother yeah I had sex with your niece and or your daughter and my niece yep it's so story. interesting um, with these time jumps. How are y'all feeling about the time jumps? Honestly, I don't like it. I, I've, I've said it from the beginning. I don't, I'm not a fan of off-screen development and off-screen stuff that takes off. I would assume the reason they're not giving us any of that stuff because it's not important to the story. But I don't like time jumps like this, especially when uh, you know I'm. A, I'm yeah, I feel like it leaves a lot of gray area for us. Yeah. High gray area to um, yeah. fill the gaps. So. I'm not really feeling the time jumps, but it's interesting how the power dynamic has shifted from 
you know, when the Witcher guy was singing underneath the tree. Was that last episode? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I'm su I'm supportive of Vinera and all her choices. <laughs> I stand her for this episode. I'm gonna bow out, you guys. <laughs> I've just been laughing because this whole discussion has just been giving me so much life. Like it's, it's, all the way from the watch along, like all the yeah. way to now. It's, been it's the tea. It's the tea. So man. fun tonight, all yeah. y'all. Double entendres and everything is absolutely hilarious. But uh, I'm just gonna bow out. I support Rhaenyra, who wouldn't lie. Um, she has to have her own back. Who else is gonna have her back? No. Damn it. Damn it, <laughs> well, Meg, before you head out, why don't you let the people know uh, where they can find your channel and all your great content? Oh, okay. Hi, guys. I'm Megan. I'm a roller skater, but I'm also a poet. Um, I have a channel, Easier Said with Meg, where I talk about whatever I want, but it's mostly going to be um, 90s nostalgia and roller skating. So if you're interested, please follow me. If you're not interested, still follow me, girl, because I'm broke. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Try <laughs> well, Maggie, yeah, I'll, good be, I'll be in the comments. I'm not leaving until you know this stream is over. I'll be in the comments with Eric. All righty. Well, <laughs> you've been G. awesome, and we'll catch you on the next one, Mike. Bye, Elliot. Peace. Bye, Matt. Take care. Take care. Well, let's bring in the next guest here, my boy Johnny. He's been patiently waiting in the back room, all right. the bits to talk about tonight's drama. That's What's right. On, I'm getting my fingers all, all, all you're messed doing up. Your, you know? uh, yeah, you're doing your best, <laughs> Allison, in the back room. How you doing tonight, man? Pretty good. Uh, I got to hand it to Mac. The king uh, looks strong tonight. Finally, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you know, Mac that. I'll give her this yeah. point. He looks strong tonight. Yep, tonight. Exactly. <laughs> tonight only. Uh, but Johnny, man, just to kind of catch up, I know you've been in the chat and you've been in the back room, but just your, mm -hmm. your general take on the episode and just your thoughts on the scene between Renera and uh, Allison. Um, I wasn't bored at all with the episode. Um, I'm kind of wondering, wondering if the boring is going across gender lines because mm -hmm. it seems like the guys weren't bored with the episode. It seems like the ladies were bored with the episode. Um, Maybe that's not true, but um, that's what I, I'm seeing in, in the chat and um, and here. Um, uh, I I I liked it. I um, I like that we get some sort of. Um, I like that uh, Chris, uh, Kristen and uh, and um, and Rhaenyra got together. I was expecting that, mm -hmm. um, and um, I knew that Damon was uh, putting on some sort of smoke show with so, you know. Yeah. And um, as far as um, Rhaenyra being in the crowd, um, I put this in the chat, but I think I think she was in the crowd because um, she was sneaking back in um, and she didn't want the king to see her because she was back from her courtship shopping well, thing she, early. Yeah, she left early. Yeah, and I think that's that the only sense. reason she was out there because otherwise yeah. she would she would have <laughs> been out, out front or somewhere else, you know, on the, on the right. side of the king. But okay. uh, yeah, overall... Um, I can't say that I've been just totally disappointed with any episode so far. Yeah. Um, on the contrast, uh, I really kind of forgot to watch the other the other uh, fantasy show on the other network, and other and, uh, and um and um I, I I didn't I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Yeah, uh, and no disrespect, I know there's a lot of people that's enjoying. Um, mm -hmm. Um, what is it? I don't even remember. Lord of the Rings have power. Yeah, yeah. power. Oh, you know oh, yeah. yeah, no, no oh, disrespect man. at all. But like this, the, that's not you know, it's not my vibe. It's this like, is this yeah, is, this yeah. is for me. Yeah, I hear you. The only man. thing wrong with the the Lord of the Rings is that it's running right now. If it was running yeah. not right yeah, now, right. I would totally be. That would have yeah. my full attention. Yeah. I would be appointment TV with that. It's mm -hmm. it can't compete with this. Yeah. And I hate yeah. that they spent a billion because. I want everybody to spend a billion, but they can't yeah. compete. Yeah. When House of Dragon is running, nobody else should be running. Period. It's simple. Don't it's do that. Different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Couldn't have said it. That's the only that, thing wrong. I even enjoyed the HBO um, commercial before the episode because I'm just like, oh yeah, <laughs> the great HBO. Shows. I'm like HBO. I'm, this, like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like bleep you, Netflix and everybody, else, Disney, everybody <laughs> else. HBO is where where all the good shows are. We know who the true king. You know, don't mess, don't don't mess it up, uh, uh, Discovery. Don't mess it up. Make sure you don't, you know. I know you're canceling movies here and there, and 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 yeah. and, and and canceling shows, but don't do not mess with HBO. Yeah, I hear you. 
which, yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Uh, but getting back into the discussion here, tossing it to you, G. Again, I think we touched on it a little bit, but just kind of elaborate on it more. Um, Allison, she is so um, gun ho on this. Number one, she cut straight to this chase, unlike her dad. Right. He, tiptoeing around with his their dad he was like i don't even know the words he used it was so poetic he tried to make it so nice but she just said i heard it you you know what with dan right. is it true so your thoughts on allison wanting to reserve the innocence of renera and also reserve uh the friendship your thoughts on the scene here this is this is my favorite uh allison moment mm -hmm. because i feel like she was finally able to really speak her mind on like how how she's just been feeling like you said like like she she just twizzled with her fingers when she's feeling uncomfortable and mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, like this was the worst thing you could do at this point. And it's just like, she, I felt like she was disappointed, but she understands what, like more than anybody else, like how it feels to just, you know, be in this position, you know what I'm saying? Like she, she complains to her and then she, uh, not complaints, but she expresses how she's feeling. But she, like, she doesn't know. Like, Allison doesn't know. I mean, not Allison. Rhaenyra doesn't know what goes on behind closed doors. You know, with the king, and like, she understands, like, you know, that she's having babies, but she doesn't. She hasn't been through that process yet. Right. So I felt like I, like I said, like I felt bad for Allison early, just because, like, I feel like they both got a, a certain level of trauma that they are working through, and we're seeing that like live because it's like at the end of the day you still my mans and like i understand at least you they know, have so much in common literally uh, otto selling his daughter to the king the king wants the renera to be sold you know to marry obviously right. powers uh, scaling but whatnot but they have so much more in common now i do understand the re reservation of renera you, mm -hmm. you married my dad and you didn't tell me about this uh or at least you know give me a heads up but mac your thoughts on again this dynamic of the two and uh allison just really wanting the best for her friend and and, and wants the the truth and doesn't want her to go down this path with damon I love that they found a way to repair this. It was kind of weird. It was a very fast repair. It was like, oh, shoot, now we're holding hands. But mm. I was happy to see it because I think it was last week. I said she needs to play chess and be her friend. She needs to. And so I'm really excited that they repaired this. But I thought it was interesting. I don't know if the king told her to come down here and go have a conversation or if she just called an audience herself like, look what happened your yeah. dad knows and i was like she got an ally in the chambers of the king and that's that's valuable right there yeah, so, yeah. i don't know why she was talking so much what are you talking so much for what are you doing i don't i'm not for the line i'm not for it Ooh, um it does not look good on there i am yeah. i am more of a lie by omission don't just be telling and if you are get you you don't know what damon's getting ready to say it mm. just was i was like right what are you doing it was messy that's what it was it was yeah. messy Rainier, just be quiet. All you had to say was, you know what? We did go out and left it at that and left mm -hmm. it at that and then started calling everybody else um, slanderous. That's what, that's what she should have started <laughs> doing. That's all she had to do was say, you know what? We did go out. But Rainier, like you were seen. They, you have eyewitnesses in right. the realm. Call and that's just. K, whatever they have. Yeah. Like, yeah. You so have that's what it, Ravens K. Yeah. It just have. wasn't. I was like, this is not a good move but all she needed to do was say yes i did leave the castle yes i was with my uncle now mm -hmm. what and just be quiet she got to talking i couldn't even follow the lie i was having a hard time i was like what did she say <laughs> i said what did she say she was oh now you at taverns it just kept yeah. going like be quiet close your yeah. mouth and she just and i was like now i was like now what's damon gonna say i like that the king did not address it directly though i like that he he didn't he was kind of like it is what it is what it is, but this is what you're gonna do. So I'm happy to see this relationship where it is. I'm happy to see that Allison came straight to her, said this is what was heard. She had her back, even in the king's chambers. Like you know, your brother is uh somebody who is deceitful. I like it. This this makes me happy. I'm glad to see them. This was a chess move for Rhaenyra. Mm -hmm. Um, having to swallow her pride and make friends with her. Even though I don't know if it was a chess move or if it was just what felt natural to her, whatever it is, this is smart for Rainier. This works in her favor. Right. You know, I think that this might uh, backfire on her though, because I think Allison's going to find the truth out about what really happened to him too, and I think that's where their their trust and this again, like as you mentioned, Matt, 
this bond or rekindling will probably be broken again because she lied to her right in her face. Um, but Johnny, man, your thoughts on on again this this discussion, the the friendship, this bond, this rekindling, will it last long or will the truth finally make its way out? To, um, I it thought is, it was I thought it was great when they had that conversation on the bench. Um, but then when um, Renera said, "Oh, uh, am I going to be locked in a castle pushing out airs?" Oh, so that was a that, that was a, that was an awkward moment right there. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I I think I think it'll last. Um, she um, she's uh, Allison's going to be tugged by her by her father, um, but it seems like she's um, gotten a little maturity too, and she's starting to figure out how to. Um, how, how to play the game a little better. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, maybe I'm just hope. Maybe it's just me being hopeful that it's going to it's going to last between those two, and they're gonna they're gonna be friends again. Ah, I hope so. I mean, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just being hopeful, but yeah. Yeah. I would say, unfortunately, with some of the, the the marketing leading up to the show, when you see the older version of the character, it doesn't seem like they're the best of friends when they're older, right. Uh, right. which is unfortunate. And, and I'm very excited to learn what what was it that really made them uh, kind of go off the rails. But speaking of going off the rails, uh, we talked about this kid, this guy here, Damon. He, he's completely – he doesn't care. Uh, G, he comes to the, – the king brings him in, throws him on the floor, kicks him in the back, and he's just like – yeah, I slept with my niece, man. With the cares, I'd rather me than some other random guy, right? Keep it in the family. Keep that was vicious. <sighs> Gee, what do you think about yeah. this scene? And, and and honestly, I know this is Max, man. This is her homie, but right. the restraint of Viserys, like, dude, you you just told me you slept with my daughter and you your niece, and you're you're destroying her image. I, he that, that calls for you see them them swords, they'll cause right. for your head. But he, there's a lot of reservation. I'm. Mac, I don't know. Is that a, is that a weak move that he didn't take out his brother right then and there? No, <laughs> that he didn't kill him. No, not. that's not weak. <laughs> of course no. not. No, um, <laughs> you know it He's was never interesting. Weak. I, but it was such a real conversation. Damon is forward thinking. He is not deterred that Rhaenyra was sullied. You know, he's not. He's kind of like, eh, this is what we did. When we right. were this age, yeah. this is what we did. Mm -hmm. The conversation that Damon had with Rhaenyra out there in the wherever they were, you guys know what I'm talking about. That was thing. a very in the courtyard. That was a very interesting conversation too. He's like, if you just mm -hmm. marry, you do what you want to do, and she's like, ah, for men it's that way. Damon runs with a different set of rules, and right. so this right here, I love that Damon told the truth because now he doesn't have to try to keep up with the lie like Rhaenyra does. See, that's that's right. age. Yeah. That's somebody who's he's done this before. Right. Um, I don't know what he was drinking or what kind of hangover he had. Man. I was like, Damon, why are you on the ground? Just what ha what did you do? What happened? Yeah. Um, I was concerned. But the king, it wasn't I mean, the king appeared annoyed and you sullied my daughter, but at the same time, it was kind of just a intense conversation that the two of them were having to me. It wasn't it was kind of like, look what you did. Like, did you do this? He's like, and he never really says, yes, I did, because he didn't actually sleep with her. I like that mm. Damon didn't come up with a bunch of excuses. I love this scene. I really do. I hate that he banished him, but he had to, finally. It's like, dude, you can't be doing this kind of stuff. You know better than she does. But no, um, it's not weak that he didn't kill him, Elliot. Oh, my goodness. Oh my Man, goodness, let me Elliot. tell you, Mac. Now, Mac, Jeez. if the shoe was on the foot, if you was in King Viserys' shoes and you just found out what we know in this episode that is that's not even a question he is he's <sighs> the heads off i'm feeding into, i'm feeding into my dragon i am it, slow to is... kill though you know i i will <laughs> but i'm slow to it so yeah. i'm gonna give you some chances and so and i wouldn't take being king or queen lightly you know you start just killing people you know and you can't just be killing people but and i really don't want to kill my siblings if i don't have to although he's trying me <laughs> right. I mean, it's not a lot of them already either. Right. Yeah, that's true. I mean, so it's right. just like, I mean, you know, it's, Khaleesi it's, saw her brother die pretty easily because he, he got too, you know, he I did. Didn't like him. He I brought didn't that like on him. himself. That's true. Didn't like that, dude. Hey, my point exactly, G. Yeah. And, and Damon's bringing this to himself, sleeping with his, his niece and Damon taking loves his, her. His, his nephew's egg and, and doing all right. the stuff he's Damon wants to marry her. He wants to die. Well, he, he wants to die. He wants to marry her. That's what he wants to do. He literally I, said, he literally, he, yeah, he said, he's I'm like, like, I'll yeah. take her as she is. He, mm. he was like, yeah, let's put these houses together. I was like, Damon's been trying to get at her. The minute that he <laughs> told her, he says, you know, he, you've grown up a little bit. I said, oh, there it is. I said, there right. it is right there. 
I feel, I feel like they still. Yeah, where you at? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jay, and then we'll take it to you, Johnny. Okay. I feel. I feel like. I feel like they're still Team Targaryen, though, know, just because it's like. I feel like Damon has like endless rope unless he does something to like his one of his children, like literally like kills one of them or something like that, like makes an actual like attack. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't feel like uh, the king is 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 ever going to go there with with Damon. And I feel like the the strength that everybody's seeing in the king right now, it's too late for all that, because if he really was strong, he would have handled all of this, you know, during these three time skips that we'd have had because the fact that the the throne and, and heirs are still in question yeah it's only his fault right you yep. know 100. and I, I feel like i feel like if you know if he had a better hand that was you know more so for the realm rather than raising up his own house mm-hmm. we would have been in that situation in in a better situation at least because like the tough decisions haven't still haven't been made Right. You know, and I, I banishing him might have been tough, but really it's just like it's I just don't want to I don't want to see you anymore. Like <laughs> you messing way too much. So I try to I try to give you a little bit of leeway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then you knew he was wrong. That it wasn't the fact that you did it, it's just the fact that you knew what you was doing. And it's just like, come on, bro. Like, what listen get Mac, out of my sight? Speak up, I'm gonna toss it to you here in a second, Johnny. But how does the Mac? Why if the king's so smart and so strong, why wouldn't he have a spy on his brother? Why wouldn't he have someone keeping tabs on Damon everywhere he goes, especially letting him back in the house? I hope the talk king, to you, king absolutely Mac. always knows Damon's moves. I don't be telling him, I don't be telling him everything. You know, Damon's over here, he took over what you call it stone. Now he's doing that. He does, he knows what Damon's doing at every moment. We've known what Damon's doing, so you know, before. yeah, except for the, the, the night he knew, he knew then too. You know, they can't now look, it's they can't just call people and send a text message to Elliot. You know, he got. Give yeah, him a baby. minute. He you found out the next day what Damon was doing. <laughs> <laughs> they got to him on foot as fast as they could. The little birds flew or the little worm. What do you call them? White worm. They got where they yeah. needed to go. It was it was a good turnaround, Elliot. I mean, I don't know what's As you're soon as here. Damon walked into that castle, I would have had <laughs> 10 eyes on him. Every move, he wouldn't he be, be thinking able about to his little brother. He, he don't be thinking about his little brother. He just gotta be problem. like. Like, That's gee, like you said, it's kind of like, geez, like, stop. You just, yeah. you just want to slap him. Like, Damon, right. stop. Like, just right. stop it. Anything. Like, just, <laughs> yeah, just slap him. <laughs> Johnny, man, we've been, uh, we've been talking about the king and his brother. What's your thoughts on all this, man? And, and do you feel the king's being uh, merciful to his brother? Do you feel like he's being stupid? He's playing the game. What's your thoughts on the king's decision to not? He's being, mer- he's all. being merciful to his brother. 100%. He can't really kill his brother because he's killing a member of his family. Um, yeah. I'm sure he wants to kill him mm. and I don't, and, um, he should, he should have seen that he let his emotions get to him when he came back. You know, I, I, I put in the chat, the, the, the prodigal uh, brother returns, you know, uh, and, uh, he let his emotions get the best of him. Um, I kind of agree that he should have been watching him, but I don't think the King has a lot of intelligence, um, operatives. The hand does and other people do yeah. and they're you know they're helping him out um so um but i think the most important thing is is um we've been discussing this in the chat uh we're going to get a master to cure um damon's uh, erect- erectile dysfunction also it, it damon's is damon's ed is mental it's not physical you guys <laughs> damon's ed is, is mental it's not it's not a physical thing guys maybe i mean riding a dragon for two years fighting the crap <laughs> Can't take out a crab feeder, might do some damage. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but wrapping up the episode, I'll start with you, G. We see one um again the, the fight with Allison telling that Renera doesn't have a deceitful bone inside of her, which we know is a lie. Um, but we see the conversation between father and daughter, and he tells her the story of fire and ice and the prophecy of the you know, the, the dagger, and there's a bigger threat that's bigger than all of this. Um, your thoughts on that scene and just kind of the uh the moment of, of that to me that was one of my favorite scenes of the episode. But your thoughts, G, on, on father and daughter conversation. Yeah, I think I think it's just another uh instance where the king is doing a lot of talking, but not a lot of action to back what he's saying. You know, I feel like if it wasn't for, you know, if 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 
Rhaenyra felt reassured in not only her status, but you know, just where the direction of the king the kingdom is going, we wouldn't be seeing like these little outbursts here and there. But I think it's important for you know him to you know still try. Like the fact that he's still trying says a lot about him, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, but very patient, patient individual, right? But it's just the 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 greater scheme of things. It's just like until he start acting acting like how he's talking it's just it's still it's still it's not enough for me you know but i did appreciate this scene i felt like it was like a little bit of a bonding moment but they still got a long ways to go and i don't know if he's gonna make it in time for that yeah it's, it's, as max said i think next week is his deadline but i think yeah. and tossing to you mac i thought this was the most mature conversation he's had with his daughter what well, minus I would say episode two when he talked how he let her know that how tough it was to lose the, his mom, you know, Emma, the wife, the mom. Uh, but then this to me was another very heart to heart, honest conversation uh, about responsibility and how important it is to, as we talked about, to carry yourself in a certain way, to not have these rumors going. And, and you know, uh, just just a really beautiful scene. Your thoughts on it, Matt? Yeah, it was time. It, this was a little late, you know, but he yeah. he needed to do a little bit of more coaching. Mm -hmm. We needed to see him doing more coaching prior to this, but now he's got to, yes, it's time to be hands on with her. This is what we need you to do. But I love that he put some bass in his voice mm -hmm. and said, this is what you're going to do. Exactly. Now, good luck getting Coralist <laughs> to take a sullied kid now because her name mm. might be Trash in the Streets. She only has one name <laughs> and it might be Trash in the Streets now. I'm not exactly sure how far the rumors have gone because once the house staff gets it, the world mm -hmm. has it. Right. So I'm not sure the repercussions that will come from her actions because she wasn't careful. But if she can get Lenore to marry her, it's a nice power play. Like it's a nice move. It should smooth that over. It should keep them powerful. If not, they've got a problem. They've got a problem. Yeah, 100 percent. I think um, I think Corlys is going to take take that offer, though. He, I mean, my so? man was willing to give his 12 year old daughter away. I think he's going to be OK with this. Uh, he'll oh. they'll make up. And I'm like, oh, hey, he's going to be like, it's about time, I King. He's got new information. <laughs> if he has new information, that might change something. You know, they don't play about girls um, coming sully. Like, they don't they don't true. play that game. So that's true. And now the king is coming back to him, not from a power of position, from a need. A need, yeah. And that that gives him the upper hand and he's going to have to really sweeten that deal <clears throat> to make it worthwhile. You giving me a sully dog. What do you, what do you bring into the table? What do you, right. what now? Well, that's so why he I waited think, yeah. too long. You know, he's coming from the back instead of approaching it from the front. The King might've, he might've slept on that when he didn't make a power move himself. He played, you know, a different, a different chess piece. So we'll see, but I'm glad that the King put some bass in his voice with Rainier because he should have probably popped her last episode <laughs> When she threw a tantrum, she didn't just throw a tantrum. She did it in front of everybody. Everyone, you know, yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, knock it off. So yeah, he said, look, this is what we will do to fix what you just did. But we're going to see how that plays out. Um, the, oh, next week. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. We're halfway point in the season. Yeah, the mid mid season finale, if you want to call it that. But yeah, I think you said it perfectly, Mac. And I think the reason why Corlys is going to take that offer is because it's in a in a almost like you owe me one, and you need something from me. So I think there's definitely going to be like a, a tug and pull uh, a relationship moving forward. But Johnny, your thoughts, man, on like Mac said, the the king being like, you know what? Forget you choosing your own man, as he told her last week. You're going to do this. This is how you're going to do it to make up for your mistakes. Your thoughts on on the decision by the king. Should have come earlier, but I'm glad that it was delivered. I like the way that it was delivered with the with that dagger. I love that we're seeing that dagger again. It's so seems, seems to be so important in um, Game of Thrones lore, and I like the fact that she read the um, she read the Valyrian off of the dagger, and she and it seems like she gets it now. I think she's still a little reluctant, but she gets it because she um, she gets what the you know what the uh, what the um, inscription says, and um, yeah, I think it was, um, it came, it should have come quicker, but here we are. And um, he did it. And um, I think it's a good way to, uh, to unify the families, the Valerian, uh, or the, the Valerian um, uh, uh, families, and um, keep the realm going, uh, you know, for his untimely death, which uh, is coming soon. 
Well said, well said. Well, wrapping up our last final scenes here, starting with you, G. Uh, I think we've been all waiting for this moment. Uh, Otto uh, is is looking for employment uh, because he's no <laughs> he's he's unemployed, my friend. Um, your thoughts, G, on this scene? And again, it, it reminded me so much of Sansa, minus obviously Littlefinger getting his throat slit by Arya, but the fact that it was just like. I've known your manipulation and it has come to an end. Um, and it, it all it took was this this rumor and uh to take to take place. But your thoughts, G, on uh Littlefinger and who do, or Littlefinger, but on Otto <laughs> losing his job and who do you think will be the next hand of the game? Yeah, I, I it's about time, you know, it's about time. The writing was on the wall in the first episode. Who mm -hmm. really is for the realm and who's not? Mm -hmm. And um I kind of I love Monopoly, right? And this might be a tangent, but I look at everything in, in, in those terms, right? And I feel like Coralis, at first, you know, when it was first suggested, like, you know, uh, doing, uh, marrying his daughter off to the king, mm -hmm. you know, that was just like, you know, getting a, a property for a property, you know what I'm saying? You get a Monopoly, I get a Monopoly, mm -hmm. you know? But now with uh, the next time with Rhaenyra, it's like, all right, now you had your chance. To do me right now now i'm gonna need like a, a railroad and 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 something else on top you know to to really you know set set the record straight and with you know him about to need a new hand that's that puts him in a more desperate position but i think the perfect person um for the job is uh definitely the one that suggested uh to the king i don't know his name i keep i keep forgetting his name is it yeah tyler was, or tyron is it tyler. yeah i was thinking the same thing yeah he kind of he kind of looked like robert baratheon a little bit he does he bit. has the results yeah. yeah um but he was yeah, the one so, that suggested the uh ultimately what the king said tonight was what he said right. last week exactly exactly yeah. so i think that's like just the perfect person mm -hmm. um because Final he strong. he yeah. he gives me he gives me okay. various vibes like where he's just for the realm because when he had that conversation with uh, the king, you know, like the king was like, would you want me to marry him to somebody, marry my daughter, to somebody in your house to raise your position? He was like, nah, like we ain't even got to do that. I'm here for the realm. I right. think this is what you should do. And he's been the most upfront person so far. So I think, I think that's, that's the easy, easy hire. Yep. I agree. I agree. Mac, any, Differences of opinion there on the next hand of the king, uh, and as well as your thoughts on the king firing Otto. <laughs> Otto was for self, but he, you know, he wasn't really wrong with, <laughs> you know, he hasn't really. I'm looking for when you're the king, everybody's coming for your throne, period. Mm -hmm. And Otto was clear what he wanted. As long as Otto didn't try to murder anybody, he didn't bother me because he wasn't wrong. His daughter was a cool match for the king because she was of age and he didn't have to wait a long time to right. start reproducing. And I thought, okay, cool. That was for self, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it worked. You know, it was a, a win for him. It was a win for the king. It was mm -hmm. not a win for Allison. But who really thinks much of their daughters yeah. in this? Actually, Allison became queen. There's some perks to that. So I take that That's back. True. That is true. So when, okay, so Otto did that and we were all like, oh my goodness, he's trying to sell his daughter. But that play was kind of cool for everybody, including his family. So now Otto's trying to get his grandson to be king. Who wouldn't? His motives are so clear. And Otto didn't lie. Otto did what he was supposed to do. So he came to the king and said, look, this is what I heard. And that was hard news to have to deliver to the king. And Rhaenyra, you know, put it in the king's mind and, and manipulated it. But you guys, I don't know that I'm upset. You know, I'm kind of concerned because who does become the next hand? Now, the next person that we trust is Mr. Strong. Yeah. But what bothers me about Mr. Strong is he doesn't appear strong. He always looks nervous when he's delivering some information. Like, say it with your chest. He always seemed like he kind of nervous. Like, look, this is what I think we should do. But just in case you don't, like, bro, something about him feels very... Mm nervous auto moves smoother he's it looks like he's been doing this for a while right which he has yep and and you know let's you're the king everybody wants your position and to to move their status up and secure their family line and Otto's was coming from here Otto wasn't slick about it it was clear you know go to his room do this you know our son should it should be the next in line he's not wrong he's the boy what we're doing is unprecedented 
So I'm kind of sad to see Otto leave for the king <gasps> because Otto, you know, I'm kind of sad. I know I'm always in left I field. Guys. I know, I I, you it. know, I'm always in left field. But I, I, I don't know. Me. She, she, she feels bad <laughs> I for Otto. I love Damon, and I, and um, I kind of hate to see Otto leave because Otto seemed like he was for self because he was, but it was clear and it was coming from the front. Now we got to try to train somebody new. Otto's been doing this for a while. So Elliot, honestly. I'm is all hell gonna break loose? Yeah. Is the yes. world is, is the world yes. gonna crumble right before them? And Otto's mad, and he has too much information, and he's still alive. But mm. next episode, you guys, um, there's gonna be some killings. They're gonna start killing people. I'm ready, especially if there's a wedding. You know what weddings do on Game oh, of Thrones? Oh boy, <laughs> no one's safe. So I just want everybody to know, no one is safe. I mean, that, that, that goes without saying with Game of Thrones. Ain't nobody right. ever really safe. See, Eric no gets one. me. It's yeah. not just me. Thank you, Eric. I thought it was just me. It's not. Bam. Eric. What did Eric say? Uh, he said he kind of feels bad for him too. See, man, a Eric bit. and Mac, y'all are tripping. Y'all feel bad for him. Oh my, a little bit. I never little really bit. After this man was like, "Oh, you know, Renera can uh, marry her 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 brother." Um, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't wrong. It was an option. You have to bring the king all the options. That was a legit option. And I yeah. thought Renera should have considered it because she could have been not bothered for about twelve years. You she had right. about 12, 13 years. Of doing whatever it is she wanted to do before she even had to look at her brother. So she might have died by then. You know, she not okay. So it was an option. Your job is to bring me all my options. And it wasn't a horrible option. It was just, you know, he was what, two, one? Two, uh, yeah, they were celebrating his second birthday last week. Yeah. 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 Mac, you never never cease to surprise me. Uh Johnny, <laughs> your thoughts on Otto saying bye bye, or not saying bye bye, but actually getting his uh his title taken away from him. And uh, uh do you it's have about any- time for him to about time for him to file with the uh, rest Westeros Employment Department. Yeah, man. Uh, I was glad to see him go. Um, he's not going anywhere though. He's he's the, he'll still be in he's the, the father. He's the father of the uh, queen. Exactly. So he's he's not. He may have lost his spot at the table, but it's not like he's going to be thrown out of Westeros. Right. Um. So, uh. But I think that it was time for him to go um especially when he when the king finally figured out the conniving that's going on and yeah sure he does have intelligence but there's other ways to gather intelligence um and um you know it's a it's up to the king now to fi- figure that out because um uh he he's been trying to um undermine what um what the the succession that the king um put in place and um he had to go he had to go. He had to go, which might make him even more powerful now that he's uh, kind of a free agent. Um, but wrapping up the discussion, and also, uh, Mac, uh, I do want to get your your insight on, uh, for you all that do not know, Mac had the opportunity to go out to D23 this weekend, and I would love to hear her experience there. Uh, so we're going to uh, wrap on that. But wrapping up the episode, uh, G, your thoughts on this final sequence. Do you think Renera will take the T? Or do you think she will just uh, let time go by and next time we see her in next week's episode, she might uh, have a something in the oven? I don't, I don't think it matter. I think she, I think it's not going to work. If she take it, I don't think it's going to work. If she don't take it, she just she for the realm. Like is she just going, she's just doing her thing. She's just doing her thing out here. So yeah. I, I don't. Um, it's interesting that they even have something like this, like, yeah. like that. It was, that it was puppy milk, and we got this. Now I don't even know what they. Call, I don't even know what he called it. It was just like I don't think he said a name. He's just like you know what this is. Like, girl, girl. <laughs> so makes things go away. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I think uh, that will make things even more mixy. So mm-hmm. you know, hey, it's 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 whatever. Like <laughs> Mac, your thoughts on the tea? Will she drink it? Will she not? And what will? will come of the decision if she ultimately doesn't decide to i know one thing she bet not come up pregnant period <laughs> period i don't she can't I come on and so she baby's coming if she's smart she got to drink this tea um because she she they just didn't culture she needed she needed her auntie to say, "Look, this is how you move." Yeah, so that where these is things don't, so where, yeah. You, Matt, where is her? Uh, where is, Rhaenyra? Yeah. Is it Rhaenyra? Mm-hmm. Rhaenyra, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. She needs her help because she's moving sloppy. 
Mm. And so, and she doesn't know what she's doing. She didn't even know what the T was. I knew what the T was when I saw it coming down the hall. I said, oh, oh. <laughs> Plan B, T. I think yeah. I saw uh -huh. it. Yep. yep. <clears throat> she probably, she needs to drink the tea because if she comes up pregnant, that's a whole, that'll mess up the whole everything. So that won't even be a con, you know, they, no. So That's um, why I think it's coming back because it's going <laughs> to. It could you imagine? Could you? And then she'd have to hurry up and. And then if it comes out with the Dornish hair, she that's got, what I'm oh, saying. That's going to yeah. be even more. It's like, is it his? Is it Damon's? I know we said Damon. Lenore, but, uh, yeah. And it comes out with dark hair, which would be really mixy. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. You imagine? Makes it. So um, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Be like Cersei. Like that's what Cer none of Cersei's kid. That's right. Yeah. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. So mm -hmm. I hope that if she does drink the tea, she has sense enough to fill it back up so that nobody knows um, what she's done. And we can move on and move, make better decisions moving forward. Oh, that makes sense now. That's what you meant. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I didn't know what she was saying. Okay. <laughs> like, I why would she know. fill it up again so that nobody... Yeah. Puts right. It, yeah. She need to have somebody bring her some more tea so that nobody yeah, knows, yeah. so that it can just sit there and we can pretend... Like she didn't drink. That's it. a real play right there. That's Man, I'm, I'm a grown up. I'm a real. I'm a real grown up out here. In the <laughs> Johnny, my man. Same question for you, man. Your thoughts on on the decision if you take it or she not, and what will be the ramifications? Oh, she has to drink that tea. Um, she can't have a child uh, now. And um, I love what Mac was saying about it coming out with Dornish hair because maybe maybe that's why uh, Renera looks so severe in the adult uh, version. Uh, or the mm. older adult version that we see, maybe she did give right. birth to a uh, to a Dornish haired uh, 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 bastard. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, she's it's in her best interest to take it um, and uh, go on with the rest of her life. Although she's probably going to have relations with Chris, uh, you know, yeah. Kristen Cole, Cole again, though. So yeah, a little. Uh... A little late night action for a little snack at night. Um, listen, guys, I personally again this overview. I thought this was my favorite episode of the season. The the political schemes, the deception, the the tea, the controversy, the the, the family drama. This is what they pitched us on. That this was to see the Targaryens at the peak of their uh, uh, empire and all of it crumbling from within. That's what's even the craziest part. It's not, you know, sure there's the idols of the world and other different characters that's going to pop up, crab feeders or whatnot, but it's it's themselves that's going to tear that strong empire down, and we're seeing just the beginning of it. So um, before we head out, Mac, I know, like I said, you're a, um, you're a big Disney fan. You got the opportunity to head over to D23. What were some of the highlights? Did you get a chance to go into uh, uh, any of the, the panels or any of the uh, – the big rooms with the, I don't know if they call it Hall H or Hall D23. Just your overview of uh, the weekend. So the weekend was really cool. This was my mm -hmm. first D23, but this was also my first Comic-Con. So I was kind of comparing the two of mm. what, and D23 is definitely more for me because I understand, I'm a Disney kid. You know, Comic-Con, mm -hmm. it's so vast. So much Disney, going on too. Yeah. I know if I see somebody bounding or in cosplay, I know it immediately. So I think just knowing that about myself, I'm probably going to be super excited about all things Disney because I really love Disney. Mm -hmm. um, I did get into a panel, but it was like a lottery system. So it was incredibly difficult for mm. people to get into the panels that they wanted to get into. Standby was extremely limited. But the cool thing is they had like overflow. So you could just watch it from a screen outside, oh, okay. um, which was awesome. So I was able to see stuff. But I will tell you, panels are kind of like going to graduations like mm -hmm. the grad like the legend ceremony i'm like why would i sit through this it was not engaging <laughs> yeah i'm not built for that i'm not built yeah. for graduations either so the long panels i just needed them condensed and luckily doing like everybody else did just following along was much better for me to just see the snapshots like tell me what we're doing in the parks tell me what marvel dropped tell me this but i was able to see the um the uh the what do you call them the the snippets of the movies the trailers i was able to see trailers like in the marvel section like i was watching the, the trailers on the big screen and that kind of thing Wait, in the so lucas section the footage of loki yeah. and ant-man and, and all that um stuff? let's see they were black just they were playing panther. it a uh, black panther mm -hmm. they played the new one the um and and andor like mm -hmm. i would oh, i was able to catch yeah. that kind of stuff as you're walking around the show floor, unfortunately, I wanted to spend all of my money, and you can't because you have to get these um, queues, these virtual queues, and they were extremely difficult to get. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that stores are supposed to keep these limited edition things stocked every day. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to keep a little bit 
every single day. And the stores didn't do that. They sold through on the first day, the second day, that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And so it was a little, it was a little funky. But overall, it's a really cool thing to do. If you mm-hmm. have small kids, Sunday is the day to go for you. It was much more calm on Sunday right. so than it was. More stuff was yeah. the previous days. So yeah. Yep. <laughs> and so if you can go on a Sunday and you're not concerned about which panels you're really trying to see, mm-hmm. Sunday is the day to go. If you if you don't like huge crowds and stuff, it was so yeah. chill today. Yesterday was chaos. I was like, oh my goodness, tons of people, tons of but the cosplays guys were just next level. I bet. I they bet. even. I was at Comic-Con, and I think their cosplays are amazing, but these are mm-hmm. just on a different, whimsical, um, they just go so far out. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Um, and awesome. you'll see a lot of group costumes. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, so we That's... just got 30 people, yeah, yeah. who can That's all really, really cool. you know, really get in, um, really get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. Some of the celebrities, you know, celebrities. I live in Los Angeles, so I can go to Starbucks and see celebrities. Right, it's not really, a, yeah, run into one of these really actors a, from House of the Dragon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of like watching them talk about it. It's kind of interesting. If that's your thing, that's available mm-hmm. to you too. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of little, just little kind of things that were kind of cool yeah. about the um about the show. But it was, you know, it was a con. It was, yeah. It was a con. It was a good experience. It's mm-hmm. very well organized. They have ways to hold you and filter you in mm-hmm. way different than Comic-Con. Comic-Con, you just standing outside in the hot sun, you yeah. know, depending upon what activation you're trying to get it. Disney is not like that. You are in huge ballrooms in these beautiful little lines and air conditioning. You know, you might be on a hard floor, but I was on carpet waiting. I liked that you couldn't wait two o'clock and three o'clock in the morning. This year, they made it so that you could not start lining up before 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm, and okay. when you do, you're not just outside. They have, they were very organized. I was like, okay, this is, this is cool. It's just, yeah. it sucks because it's virtual queues for the most part and very right. limited standby. Gotcha. And they didn't always know how many people would fit from the standby line. So you'd think that you would be getting into a panel and it turns out it just kind of chops off, but pretty mm. interesting panels. You know, they had some stuff. They had a little bit of something for everybody. A that's awesome. Bit. That's awesome. One day that's on the bucket list to attend one of those. One question I do because I'm a big Marvel sure. fan and we'll wrap it up. Uh, out of the Wakanda Forever stuff that you saw, Loki, uh, Werewolf by Night, Secret Invasion. Uh, what else did they present there? There was so much Thunderbolts. stuff. Was there anything, Thunderbolts. Yeah. Was there anything from a footage pers- perspective or something that Kevin Feige said? And, and I don't know. Personally, are you a big Marvel fan? If, if any of that stuff really got you excited? If so, was there something that really stood out to you with the Marvel panel? I am not you. So you, you know, you're totally, I love you're you. yeah. totally Marvel. Like you, that would have been where you would have been the whole day. Me? Yeah. yeah. But. Well, with that being said, was there anything that, from an outside that, looking in? Was there something that, oh, that really stood out that got you excited? I am also not a person who gets excited for stuff that's way down yonder. So Black Panther is coming. It's right around the and corner. And Black Panther is l- just beautiful. And I want to be mad about it. Like I have very mixed emotions about it. Same. But Elliot, when you are in the building and that mm. music starts playing, you okay. feel it in your you feel in your body. Everybody right. stopped. So we right. were all walking and then they played the, the trailer and everybody did it. And I said, yeah. Oh, it, yeah. it was it's captivating, it's beautiful. Mm. Um, the one with the wolf though looks kind of the black and white, like where was my night? Yeah. Where, I was like, What are we doing? This is mm-hmm. kind of right horror esque. Like, I thought, thought it, yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, that's you, that's horror, it's mm-hmm. it's you. That is something different, and I like when they bring I know people freak out about She-Hulk. You're either over here, you're over here, but it's different. You know, it's something yeah. different. Right. So when I think of the where, well, I'm like, yeah, that it's different. It's something mm-hmm. that kind of caught my eye too. But those are the two standouts for me. Everything else is just kind of like, okay, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll get here when it gets here. That's awesome. But those That's two, awesome. yep. Well, Mac, I appreciate it. And again, I'm, guys, check out her, her content. You know, I'm sure she has a little bit more in-depth uh, conversations about her wonderful time at D23 Expo. But wrapping this two-hour stream up on this fourth episode, uh, I, I love these Sundays. Favorite time of the week. Um, this show is amazing. Uh, you guys are all amazing. G, Johnny, Mac, uh, Meg, our boy Eric that was in earlier. You all are incredibly awesome, and, and the door is always open to rejoin. Uh, and, and I'm so excited for next week's episode because I think Mac, your boy's going to be saying bye-bye. I think you're right. I think- Somebody's dying. <laughs>
We'll be there. But uh, roundabout way uh, of outro and out, uh, G man. Again, it's good to see you, man. Hope to to see you again. If you want to let the people know where they can find your content uh, and what's the next uh, awesome review you got lined up for the folks. All right. So, um, like I said earlier, my name is G. Uh, I do reviews, recaps, and reactions on YouTube. And right now, it's probably going to be the uh, a recap of the show, just like a little bit more condensed. Um, and then I also, I, st- I still got to get my note review out there. I've been seeing the movie, and I, I just hadn't had a chance to edit. I got a lot of backlog stuff that I'm just trying to make sure I, I, I get out. But um, definitely excited for, like, uh, she hosts coming out and a whole bunch of other stuff. So... Uh, I just love, I love this show. I love this. I love this, uh, this uh, live. And it's just a lot of fun having conversations about this stuff, like, especially like right after. So um, super dope and uh, appreciate y'all. Of course, man. Of course. Yeah. I'm looking forward to your thoughts on, on uh, Nope and uh, a lot more other great stuff, man. Definitely check them out. Like I said, guys, by the time this video is uploaded, I'm going to have all of these wonderful people's information in the description of this video. Mac, so glad to have you back on. I know you riding. You go for your king. I'll give you that, Mac. You go hard for the king, and I appreciate that. Uh, but one, let the people at home know where they can find you and the next bit of content you got lined up for them. Let's see. Um, Mac is uh, M.A. Couture Crafting. I do all kinds of um, quilts and crafts and things based off of my fandom or inspired by my fandom. I did Oogie Boogie this week. I did D23 this week. And you know what? Let me tell you guys how much I love this. I left D23 early so that I could watch Game of Thrones and be here for this live. I was getting here, guys. Um, I have some content coming about that, but I decided to more just kind of enjoy it as opposed to really, you know, showcase everything. It was a con and it was a cool con and they have tons and tons of content out there for you guys. But the next thing that I have coming up, I think it's some more Halloween um more Halloween inspired Disney projects. Thanks so much. Nice. I can't wait. Can't wait to check it out. Uh, and Johnny, last but not least, man, it's always great to see you, man, and hear your thoughts on this amazing show. Uh, again, so happy to have you on. Well, why don't you let the people know where they can find your content? I know you, you write scripts, you, you, you're, you're yeah. you know, a content creator yourself. So why don't you let the people know where they can find you? Uh, yeah, I just, um, was at the San Diego 48, uh, film awards last night. Uh, Unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't get any awards, but we did have our film shown. And um, I'm over at Instagram, uh, Johnny Pappas, and I've been dipping into the AI art world, which is really um, interesting. Um, uh, and putting in and being able to do some concept art for my scripts, which uh, which is like a high concept uh, sci-fi piece, which is kind of interesting. So check out my Instagram for some of that stuff. And uh, all my links are at uh, Linktree here, Linktree Johnny Pappas. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, before we head out, I want to give a quick shout out to Simone with the uh, super chat. I appreciate that, Simone. I appreciate every single one of you all that liked, shared, throw through your uh, thoughts in the comments. Again, shout out to Eric. Uh, shout out to Meg. Of course, shout out to G. Mac and Johnny. And as far as myself goes, uh, got a lot of stuff planned this week. We got Woman King dropping tomorrow. We got. Um, Pearl, I'll be seeing that tomorrow. Um, uh, Blonde is coming out on Netflix. I, I think I'm seeing it on a Tuesday. And then one of my favorite shows of all time is making its return. And that's Atlanta season four, the final season, which I'm very excited for. So keep an eye out for all of that. But again, on behalf of myself, Eric, Meg, Mac, G, Johnny, you all have been awesome. You have a fantastic week. And we will see you all next week when we're going to say goodbye to the king, probably. Maybe not. He's going to probably live to the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs>